All right, so we have a quorum, so I will call the meeting to order at 9.35 a.m. So you have an agenda that is posted in your packet. Uh, and the first thing we're going to get to on the agenda would be, uh, what is agenda item three, um, which is the discussion of the OCA role and making recommendations to town council re regarding town manager appointments of town department heads. Uh, and so to provide some context, especially for the public, uh, we received uh, from the town manager on July 9th his memo of appointment uh, for the new director of senior services. Uh, and per the charter, uh, the town council has a role uh, in approving or rejecting or just letting become effective town department heads within 14 days of the town manager filing those appointments. Uh, so since it was filed on the 9th, I believe 14 days would be tomorrow. And so if the town council uh, wants to act to either approve or reject, uh, then it must do so at tonight's meeting. This is the first meeting that OCA has had since the town manager filed that appointment and since OCA is the committee uh, that is responsible for advising the council on town manager appointments, uh, it is part of our role uh, to provide a recommendation to the council tonight um, regarding this appointment. That said, uh, to date, OCA has deliberated on a single department head, which was the Director of Human Resources back in January, December, very early on in the tenure um, of this committee. And because we hadn't really had a time to figure out what it meant for us to consider an appointment, uh, we, we, we recommended with very little deliberation. Uh, we're again in a situation where we haven't had a whole lot of time to discuss what we even look at when we're looking at town manager appointments, um, and yet we have to act fairly expeditiously because if we don't make a recommendation to the council um, and they don't do anything tonight, uh, then the appointment just becomes effective tomorrow. Um, so before we actually looked at uh, Mary Beth Ogilwitz, uh, who is the Director of Senior Services appointment, uh, I wanted to take a moment and hear from the committee about uh, what you see as our role here and how we would evaluate town manager appointments for specifically for department heads. What, what should our discussion even look like and what should we focus on? Um, and then I think we can move on to actually trying to uh, apply that to the candidate uh, herself. So it open the floor to discussion from the committee as of what you see as our role with town department heads, what we should be looking at, what we should consider when we're making a recommendation to the council. Thoughts from the committee? Darcy? I guess when I uh, looked at the application, I had the same reaction that we've had with a lot of other appointments, which is what am I comparing this person to? Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of feel like um, either, you know, we have a choice of either rubber stamping the town manager's um, picks for these different department heads or, I mean, the only other alternative is really, you know, knowing what, what the uh, pool was so that we can see whether this is, seems to be the best candidate. Okay. Other thoughts on what people see as our role in considering town manager appointments to department heads? Alyssa? So piping in as I often do as to historical perspective, as hopefully all of you know, the charter in, has the town council do this associated with department heads. We'll talk about appointments later, uh, you know, committee members, but for department heads, this is a new thing. The select board had no say in department heads. There was no discussion. It was just, here I hired a department head, and isn't that wonderful, which is great, but there was no role at all, so I don't have anything to compare it to, whereas I will have something to compare it to when it comes to committee appointments later. And um, coming off of what Darcy said, I, I am really, confused about exactly how we can be a value add 
to this particular kind of situation. And so while I appreciate the words in the charter, I'm not sure what it actually means because obviously we're not going to be made privy to the pool. The only thing I can think of that maybe would make things feel more meaningful in terms of our participation would be if, for example, the council had been apprised of the job description back when it was written because it had probably been written differently after we had someone serving in the role for decades um, and said, this is what I'm looking for in mm -hmm. a new senior services director. What do you think? Is, does this make sense with what you've been hearing out in the community? And we said, yeah, sure, but did you think of this thing? And then, you know, the next thing would be, well, I've got a screening committee together. Well, does it include anybody from a group that's directly impacted by senior service? And he'd say, sure, of course it does. And there would be sort of this unfolding conversation over the course of a couple of town manager reports to the town council that would give us some insight as to where he was heading without divulging any personal information about people, but was also out in the community, you know, so that the community would have seen what the job description looked like and, and might have some thoughts associated with that, again, especially with somebody who's, um, we've been very fortunate to have somebody in the role for a really long time prior to this, and, and now, you know, it's a different day. If that had happened, then in theory, at this point in the process, we could say, well, remember all those things we were told, does what he's written in this report make sense in light of all those things we were told? Just like when we do our appointments and we say, well, we're setting up these various evaluation criteria, and now does it make sense based on what we said we were going to look at? But since we're, there is no conversation at this point associated with that, and one certainly hopes that we don't have to hire department heads on a regular basis, mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't, I mean, years can go by without hiring a department head. Um, without something like that sort of building up of what the position is and then saying, and look how I accomplished the things I laid out that I said I would do, it feels to me like it's just, I, I filled a vacancy in, in that grade and I have no reason to question it. Okay, thank you. Sarah. So I would agree with a lot of what Alyssa said and I think that um, even though we obviously can't do this now, when we're thinking about our decision tree um, in the future for department heads, I think it would be thoughtful to come up with a timeline um, that we talk to the town manager about that ends up being written somewhere into a packet or um, becomes uh, our process um, with him because I feel like there are things that were written into the charter that seemed to me like people were thinking, I would really like this as a check and balance. I would, you know, I'm really thinking about this as something that, you know, helps the rest of the council then have some input on what the town manager does. But again, we don't have a process. So without having the process, it actually doesn't work at all. So it makes sense to me to set up something like what Alyssa described, similar to what we're doing when we look at appointments, you know, having the job description, what are we looking for? What are the qualifications? And then we could, we could make more of a, an actual check and balance sort of respectful decision when it comes time to do this again. Okay. George? I've said this before, I feel that um, these are his appointments and that our job is largely one of making sure a process is being followed and that we have some sense of what the process was what he was looking for, and um, I don't think that um, it's our job to second guess um, his decision. I think our job is a, a broader one. If you have a particular department where there are issues or problems, um, then there might be a role for us um, in a more um, oversight fashion, but I really feel like um, these are his appointments and as long as he's clear about the process and about um, what it is that he's looking for, and we have a, 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 a clear sense of um, who was chosen, and we have, um, as we do always, um, a CV or some kind of uh, description of their professional qualifications, um, I think that's what I see our role is. Other thoughts on what our role is and how we should it be 
evaluating the candidate. So I've heard some idea that we need to know a little bit more information to really evaluate. Um, I've heard that just getting this at the end of the process is maybe less useful than being somewhat involved early on, and I've heard uh, that our focus really should be was the correct process followed. Uh, so given that, and given that we do have uh, an appointment in front of us to, to a department, um, before we actually discuss that appointment, um, given that so much of what we just said was, well, if, if we had this, right, if we had this, how do we feel, or how do we want to go about actually discussing this appointment? What are we looking for, um, and what information do we want to bring to the council? Um, and the reason I say that is, is obviously tonight the council will ask for OCA's recommendation, um, and if we regardless of how we advise, there, there might be a question as to why. And if our answer is just, eh, we're, we didn't have the information we wanted because we came up with what we wanted today, um, you know, I don't think that that's, that would be something that would uh, strengthen uh, our, our, our uh, committee. And so before we look at Mary Beth, what, what are we looking for to deliver to the council in our recommendation. What do we think is important for us to consider? Uh, I know George focused mostly on process. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to elaborate on what that means. What else, what else are we looking for? Alyssa. So I guess I'd like to ask George more about what, he, what process he thinks was followed because all we got was nothing up until the point of actually making the appointment. So we don't know what the process was. We only know the report of the process at the very end of the process. So, and that initial report of the process at the very end of the process didn't even include a notice that was compliant with the charter in terms of letting people know about the vacancy. When I asked for that to be provided, that was then provided. So I think that that is the kind of thing that we want for part of our process is to be able to say the packet should include this information that shows you're being compliant with the charter in terms of uh, notifying people of the vacancy. But that wasn't in there, and it has since been provided upon request. So I think us saying that, and I appreciate what you said, Evan, about the fact that you know, it's a little late now in terms of this particular appointment, and who knows, we may not need it again for two years. but to be able to say what are the things we're looking for and do we expect, so aside from this particular instance where we didn't have the notice provided and I asked for it and it got provided, was there something we wanted earlier in the process like I was alluding to earlier? Did we want a job description to be shared with the council when it was published, before it was published? You know, At what point do we think we have something useful to add because to say he followed the process, if he makes up all of the process on his own, then obviously he followed his own <laughs> process. I mean, there's not much to, to stamp yes or no on something like that. So I guess I'm just asking for future, what would we have wanted the process to be? Not that we have, per se, any problem with this process at all, as it is right now, but what do we think we'd be doing that would be useful in future? Or do we take the other opinion, which is that whatever he gives us is fine, who cares? Um, and I guess part of the problem I have with that is that the words don't say, in the charter, don't say confirm, like they used to in the Old Town Government Act for appointments. Mm -hmm. They say approve or reject. Well, it seems like it would be a really strange bar that we might develop associated with what rejection would look like. But approval to me feels like I'm actively doing something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to bandy semantics. Actually, I had this conversation with somebody not in town government over the weekend, and they're like, really? Confirm, approve? You're going to argue about that? I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> confirm feels like something like, sure, you did it, it's fine. Approve feels like, yes, I made a positive, authoritative decision on that, and that I have no reason to say that decision is wrong. So I just feel like the chart the charter is trying to say we have something to say about this and to just say, 
you wrote a nice memo at the end, it sounds good, doesn't really feel like quite enough to me. Sarah. So I'm going to agree with Alyssa on this, and I want to make it really clear that I'm not being adversarial to be adversarial or saying that we should be the ones that are always second-guessing what the town manager does. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is that the charter does call for us to do something <laughs> with, these, with these appointments. And right now, if we, we look at this application, I would say, sure, looks to me like this person has some qualifications that I in my head would think would be great for this position, and it looks lovely. And that's about as much as I can say, which you're right, it doesn't really necessarily say a whole heck of a lot about what OCA is actually doing. Um, what I would, would maybe want to see and that we could set up is something very similar to how we sort of look at every other appointment that's done, which would be having the original job posting, the job description, that would be great if it was before it was published, um, what was the process that was followed, who was involved in the process as far as, you know, interviews and things of that nature, and then maybe the pool with demographics. I mean, these are all things that we have for every other appointment which we've asked very kindly for, and we can ask kindly again, because I realize that the town manager doesn't have to give us any of these things, but I think it would, we could then look at something, see what the qualifications were, see what the process was, take a look at the demographics. We're not necessarily wanting to, you know, nitpick everything with the town manager and say, well, we want to see more and it's our decision. We're simply being able to say, we're supposed to confirm. We have an idea of what the qualifications <clears throat> were. We know what the process was if someone asks us and Therefore, we can say, yeah, that, that we confirm that because this makes sense to us rather than, I think, not having that information ahead of time and then basically what we are is a rubber stamp because we don't, we don't have any parameters there to really say yes or no in a uh, knowledgeable fashion. Okay. George? This is new to the town manager as well, apparently. Um, in the past, he's made his appointments uh, pretty much without any kind of quote-unquote oversight, so I think this is also new for him. Um, and uh, to my understanding, the, uh, it has worked fairly well. So I'm not overly concerned, and I don't feel like um, we need to spend uh, hours and hours going through um, these uh, appointments, trying to figure out who we would appoint if we were the town manager. Um, I hear uh, um, Alyssa's point that there may, some, may be some specific things that we would like from him that he's not providing, and I have no problem with that. Um, but I do have some concern about this idea that, that we're going to sort of be looking over his shoulder as he makes his appointments. Um, these are his appointments, and he manages these departments, oversees these departments and the people who run them. We do have a role, we're not a rubber stamp. Um, I don't think we just sit here and go yes, yes, yes. Um, but I think it would be a very, very unusual situation in which we would um, reject an appointment made by the town manager to head a department. And I would think we would have some very good reasons for doing that. Um, so um, we do have a role, um, but I think at this point, we're all trying to figure out um, our place and our role in this. And perhaps the first step is what uh, I'm hearing from some of you, which is there's some specific things that you would like to have from him that either he provided late or he didn't provide. And we should perhaps uh, come to an agreement on what those are and then present them to uh, the town manager. But I would not be uh, happy about using that to delay these kinds of appointments at this early stage. I think we also have a lot of learning to do. Um, so if we can agree on what it is that we'd like um, as a body, as a group, um, and then let uh, the town manager know, um, then I think we'll all have a clear sense of, of what is being expected. But I personally do not see our role as uh, perhaps as extensive as I'm hearing from some. It's not that we don't have a role, it's not that we don't have a place in this process, but these are his appointments and he is the one who um, oversees these people and uh, tries to take care of the day-to-day -day business of the town. Other thoughts? 
Darcy? I just would add that I, I would agree that it would make sense to get more about demographics and um, um, what was the other thing that Alyssa said? Um, uh, just uh, more information from the town manager to uh, just help us know that the process was followed that we want. Um, and uh, I'm, I, you know, I feel like we aren't going to be able to make a very valid decision about the actual substance of what's being put forward. So, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to our just um, not taking action as long as long as the process was uh, um, followed properly. Can I just ask a follow-up, Darcy? Um, more information that the process was followed. What information is that? I didn't understand the question. Oh, sorry, so I'm, I'm trying to take notes on what everyone said, and I heard from you, it, you'd like more demographic information and more information that the process was followed. Well, we, we would be able to tell that presumably by the information that he presents. So is there additional information that you're looking for that's not in the memo? Uh, just the demographics. Okay. Sarah. Sorry, I didn't feel it. No. I'm not sure. I think I, maybe I'm not communicating well. Um, I don't, I'm not saying at all that we should be second guessing, or I think I said this this way, or peering over the shoulder doing the job of the town mm -hmm. manager at all. I guess what I'm thinking of is as uh, what Evan was saying, as chair, he's gonna have to say tonight to the rest of the council, we have this person for department head and um, we are or are not recommending them. And then he'll have to give a, a good reason. Um, and I can think of a certain people that whenever I would Say something like that would look at me like hey, what is your information and rightly so right so i'm thinking what would be the information that evan would be giving them that we are basing this upon right now what i what, like i said before what i can see is is that if um if if i were looking for someone right and we do have now the job posting we can sort of like we can sort of put together well here's the job posting and i think this person meets them and we you know we Think the town manager has done a good job before and we don't see any problem with it right we could say that but i don't know that i have a lot more than that to work with so then i would maybe follow up with what would be the things that we would like in the future and we ask kindly as we have before to the town manager for some information that when we go to the council we can say i went by this 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 and this and i think this works which what we have been doing right was a list of the job posting which we now have a job description, and again, if it would be possible if you would give it to that before it was published. And again, the, another thing, number three, was what is what was the process? Number four, who was involved in the process? And number five, what was the pool, demographics? And then, you know, they don't have to be, you know, say three people. We've talked about demographics to death. If it's three, <laughs> you know, you, we all know doing our own reports how tricky that is, but it does give you some idea. So then I could then I think that the council we could say to the council tonight these are things that we think would help us make give you more information on why we said yes or no the next time we have to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts from the committee. Yes, George. Should we take a few moments now and try and come up with a, uh, a list of the kinds of things we're looking for, even though it doesn't have to be definitive? I think we at least get a start. Um, Sarah's already mentioned some things. Alyssa's mentioned some things. I'm um, in my own back of my mind. I'm thinking of one or two things, which I think before probably many of you have already mentioned. So there's an interest in demographics. There's an interest. I mean, clearly a, a job description. Timely posting, maybe Alyssa can help me there exactly, but the idea that this is posted in a timely fashion, um, that things aren't done uh, in a, we feel like we're being rushed. Um, there may be reasons, I'm sure there are reasons for it, but there's a sense of perhaps that this is happening rather quickly and we might like a little bit more time. Um, maybe that could be phrased better. Um, 
how many candidates, how large the pool was, um, and did the nature of the search committee. Usually he forms, I believe, some kind of group or search committee that he works with, and so a description of that. Um, are there other things that um, I'm missing or people would like to add, I guess is my thought. Alyssa? I would like us to request the not the ability to all sit down and, and micromanage this, but the idea that a job description would have been floated by us as a draft and said, hey, look, we haven't had to rewrite this job description in 35 years, so we thought it should look like this. Is there anything else that jumps out at people based on your experiences and what your constituents have told you? Mm -hmm. um, and then we'd all just say, yeah, that looks really good. And then chances are we would change nothing, right? We would mm -hmm. offer nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not that he's asking for our approval. It's just a way of engaging us in the process. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when the final memo came out, he'd be able to say, remember how I showed you the job description before it was posted. Mm -hmm. Remember how we post vacancy notices in compliance with the charter on such and such place. Mm -hmm. Remember how I said I would recruit somebody that has served on the Council on Aging for a long time to be on the interview team, and I found somebody to do that, as opposed to, well, I said I would do that, but then time got short and I didn't ask that person to come, right? So it, it's kind of mm -hmm. like outlining that process. Rather than telling us the process at the end that he followed, yeah. there's no way of knowing if he complied with the process because there wasn't a process until he decided that was the process that there was. Okay. So to know a little bit ahead of time what his thinking is and then to see if that plays out. So again, like, I, and I, I like, actually like that example of, I wanted somebody on, from the Council on Aging, I intended to have somebody on the Council on Aging, push came to shove, I didn't have anybody from the Council on Aging at the interviews, then we might say, huh, that's kind of weird, um, because you told us that we thought that you thought that was important. Mm -hmm. So that that's mm -hmm. the kind of information I'm looking for to be able to say, yes, we got from point A to point B, and it makes total sense. And again, this is hugely about, yes, they are his appointments, and yet, we have this weird check and balance thing in the charter that says this thing. So to say we can't, I mean, and we probably do need to at some future conversation come up with a, what would be so egregious that we would reject? You know, is, it, is it simply the third white man of a certain age that you appoint as a department head is egregious? Or is it that you told us you were gonna do something and then you didn't do it and mm -hmm. so we reject? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't know how serious that's, I mean, I've seen that political play out in other communities where they've said, we're not, we're not approving any more of your appointments till you show us how you're doing more in terms of outreach, okay. you know, for example. And I, I'm not saying we're there at all. I mean, there clearly <laughs> no. was lots of advertising, this is all described in the memo right. that he gave to us, but to be able to say that, right. you know, we don't wanna play gotcha at the end, we're trying to do the other thing. And the other thing I wanna make sure we're clear on that I think is, again, confusing, because we're still new to this, it's only seven months in, is that when we say we, who do we mean? Do we mean OCA, or do we mean the town council? Because we could arguably go to the town council as OCA and say, but I don't know, you know, you guys figure it out. You tell us <laughs> what you want. We don't, we're not providing any leadership on this because we got nothing. I mean, that would be an option. I'm, I'm hoping we don't follow that, but that would be an option. <laughs> but what we think, right, if, because we work with him more, we've asked, if, we've asked for other things more directly. The council hasn't been privy to this conversation, except, you know, if they, I, I have no idea how they'd be privy to it, because we're talking about it tonight. So they, they therefore haven't heard us tossing this around. So they, I'm sure, have the same questions we do. And it's just a question of how many of them want to feel like, hey, I, I don't want to seem like I'm looking over the town manager's shoulder to say, I don't know, but yet I'm trying to show that the town council has a role here. So I think there's the difference, again, just like our decision trees, we have to clarify what's our role as OCA in recommending to the town council so that we don't look useless. And then also for the town council, to be able to tell the town council, we think you should decide this not just because we said it was good, but because we think this is an appropriate thing for the town council to say is an okay thing to do. So we have two we's that we have to deal with, and so usually they're further separated in time than today, but not always. Darcy? Um, are, I assume we're gonna talk about the actual application at some point, but um, uh, I guess I'm kind of concerned about the issue of uh, how many interviews 
might be conducted and I'd want, I want to have information about that. Why, if there, are, if there are less than two interviews, why that would be in a pool this size? So, I guess with any appointment, right, there's, there's two sides to it. There's the person itself who's being put forward, and then there's the process that was used to put that person forward. Um, what I'm hearing a little bit from the committee is a lot more interest in OCA being a check more on the process and less so on the person. Um, and so, you know, when I was when I was thinking last night about sort of what criteria I would be using, um, I said so I would divide it between person and process. And with person, all I would do is I'd want to look at the job description and say, does this person reasonably match the job description, right? Um, does uh, you know? Because I think we don't want to we don't want to second guess him, but also if he was putting forth someone with no experience that didn't seem to match the job description, I think we'd probably say, well, hold on, this seems a little weird. Um, and then the other side is the process, which I think has to do with a lot of uh, lists that Sarah and George gave, which was, was there a posting? Um, was there a job description? Uh, how many people were in the pool? Who was involved? Um, and do we feel comfortable with that? Um, and so I think the discussion we've had has been really useful in thinking about how we can look at uh, the appointment he's put before us. So we have the job description, thanks to uh, Alyssa. Um, that job description, I believe, only went to you and I. The council, I don't think, has the job description. That's right, because we were thinking he'd need to revise the report to add it in. I don't, I don't remember if it did. made it up in the packet, like as an addition. Into the council packet. Right. But it, the, I get, maybe it did, but the council didn't receive it with the memo, and when he pr did provide it to us, that, that didn't go to the council, I don't think. But we all have it, at least in our packet, because I uploaded all the documents into the packet. Um, so to the extent of evaluating the person, I think we have the ability to look at what the job description was, look at the qualifications the person has because we do have their resume and say, okay, does this person seem qualified or not? Um, and again, I agree with George, I don't think we wanna be second guessing too much. We'd be looking for something egregious, right? So director of public works who's only ever served coffee at Dunkin' Donuts mm -hmm. um, would be maybe problematic. Um, with the process, the question is, do we have enough information? Um, and is there anything that sends up a red flag? So I, I guess we're probably ready to turn to the actual, uh, the next part of our agenda, which is actually consideration of the town manager appointment. And I think we can start with process since Darcy raised the point of uh, the, the interview. So what was it, 20 applications, two people forwarded for interviews, but only one of those two interviewed because one withdrew. Um, Darcy has some questions or concerns? I, I, it just kind of uh, stands out uh, that only one person was interviewed of 28 applications. I would, would have thought that when one withdrew, they would find some other person in the pool at least, um, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. maybe she stood out and they didn't see any reason to do that. Okay. Are there other thoughts on process, either things that um, we have questions about, uh, things that might raise a red flag, or places where uh, you wish you saw more information? George. And to what? We find it helpful, I think, I find it helpful when the town manager is present to answer these kinds of questions. And that seems like, a, to me, a legitimate question to ask. Um, would be part of our process be uh, requesting that he be present, especially since these appointments don't happen that often? Yeah. Um, and uh, I realize he's busy, but on the other hand, 
think it's been made clear, at least to me this morning, that, um, that we have an important role to play. So um, part of that might be actually having him here um, for individual counselors if they have questions, and we have one already, uh, that, that could be asked directly. And that also would give us a sense um, in a formal setting um, how he perceives and how he thinks about these sorts of things. Um, so do, are people comfortable with the idea of, uh, for these appointments in the future, that um, uh, we request that he be present for us to, and it may only take five minutes, it may take 50, I don't know. Um, or do you feel that's too intrusive? Um, how do others feel about this? One at a time. The question is how do others feel about whether having, or not the town Having the town manager, manager present, present um, at some point in this, in our procedure, um, where we can't ask him directly questions, or are we going to be okay with just sending him an email and then he, you know, or in, uh, how do, you know, how is does Darcy get an answer to her question, um, or any other kind of question that, that we might have as a committee? Um, the simplest way it would seem to me to have him present um, for these kinds of appointments, at least. Um, and we've had him present at other uh, junctures for other appointments. And I found that fruitful. I found that um, informative. Um, so do we want to make this part of our regular procedure that what we are going to expect in future appointments, that he be present here for us to ask him questions if we have any? Sarah. So I think that a lot of this conversation it, it, it naturally good for us because it does say something about process that we have that works is that we are coming back to some things that have helped us before. And I would say having the town manager here to discuss his appointments, I think has been really helpful. And I think it's one of the reasons why we decided for other appointments that he does that we, we definitely want him here. So I would say yes. I mean, these are even bigger. These are hiring department heads. It's even bigger than other appointments that he makes, and I would think that it would just, it would not be anything adversarial. It would certainly just be a way to get more information. Other thoughts? I would, I would agree with that, and I, I think we pretty much already decided we wanted to do that with his other appointments, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So maybe he, we, he should just be on notice that, you know, we want him around for a half an hour on our meeting days when we're looking at his appointments. Um, you know, the, I, when I looked at this, and there may be absolutely, you know, fantastic reasons why he um, was putting this person forward, but, you know, the, the, the issue of the one interview popped out right away, and also, um, that, she, you know, she's a, a one of 28 people and she has a lot of experience that's kind of peripherally related to elder services, but not directly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be a question that I'd ask the town manager and he might have a fantastic answer for it. Um, but it is something that, you know, occurred to me as I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. Alyssa? The other thing is um, that we could write into process and would have been a question we would have asked him if, if we had asked him to be here is, so I think it, it's both, yes, he want, we want him to be here, but also we want to write it down. So it's not just, we want you to be here and we'll just ask you random things. Like there are specific things we want to ask you. And one of them would be, following up on this one person left, what, what was the decision-making process behind the fact that you were offered two finalists, one withdrew? We know sometimes that happens in really awkward timing, sometimes like the morning of the interview, right, as opposed to like weeks ahead of time. So why did you choose to not go back to the screening committee and say, was there, because we all, any of us who have been involved in interviews, we all know that there, you know, layers fall out, right? It becomes really obvious at some point, you know, these five people are in this category, these 12 mm -hmm. people are here, and these two or three people or four or five people are here. But that doesn't mean you can't go back when you look at the balance, because normally when you bring two finalists forward, there's a reason those two finalists are the two finalists. And so 
if you're now missing what that one finalist brought to the table, then what was the decision to not go back? Was it just, again, what's, you know, following up on what Darcy's saying, is it just this person was so obviously, interestingly qualified that, that, I was, that it, it was so clear that this would be the person rather than just trotting somebody else out for the sake of form, which we know committees sometimes do. Um, but was there even a conversation? I mean, was it just, oh, well, one dropped out, so now there's no further conversation. So I would want to know that as part of the process that, yes, I went back to my screening committee and they said, you know what, this is the only one left. Or they said, no, actually, we think you should interview these other three people. And he said, nah, I don't want to. I mean, and, and that's his right to do that. I just think it's a piece of information we should have, again, considering the size of the pool. It's not like the pool was only three people to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other comments? So, um, in the past, we have, I don't remember if we took an official vote on it, but we certainly came to consensus about requesting the town manager's presence uh, that has been communicated to, the, that was communicated to the town manager uh, in a council meeting, uh, in a report. Uh, I also communicated it again to the town manager in a meeting I had with him on July 1st after our last meeting. Um, my expectation, because given that he knew we were debating senior center director today, was that he would be present. Uh, I'm realizing now I probably should have shot him an email to confirm that, um, but it was an assumption that knowing that we've requested his presence and knowing that, and him knowing that we were absolutely talking about this today, he would be here. Um, I did text him, he said he's at DPW. He could be here for 11.15. So that's about an hour from now. And so the question I have for my committee at this point is, are the questions we have um, enough to delay deliberation on this for an hour until the town manager shows up so that we can ask him? Um, or do we feel comfortable moving forward with this discussion? I think that I'm very comfortable with, with waiting and having him here. I, I, I kind of like these discussions because I often find myself <laughs> changing direction. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's fine. And it's, this is all new to everyone. But I think it's also new for him. And I think it maybe it would be uh, important for us just to reinforce what I've been hearing from my colleagues, that we do have a role and we take it seriously. And he's learning this too because he, it's new for him as well. Um, so I like the idea of us waiting and having you all ask him questions that you want to ask him. Uh, there are one or two that kind of I have in the back of my mind. And it's, um, so I think we should wait until 11.15. And uh, I think that also just in terms of, for him, reinforcing uh, the sense that this is a new day and there's a new procedure that we're, it's evolving and uh, that we kind of expect him to be here for us to ask him questions, uh, even if it's only five minutes, um, and that he should always, you know, assume that. Alyssa? I agree completely. I, I totally appreciate that people get, that, you know, make assumptions, and we all do that and assume people will be here, but I'm kind of surprised he's not here. And knowing that we were also, I mean, this is his second department head appointment, maybe something came up, things happen. Yeah. Um, and he figured he'd catch us when he got back to the town hall. But also, because we do have his other set of appointments that he just sent us this morning to see if we would possibly be willing to work on them as a, you know, under 48 hours uh, unexpected item, which also happened to be related, uh, which are, you know, still out of bangs, but not the same department per se. And so he should be here for that, too, because we don't, we don't even have our next for sure meeting schedule. And so I would like to have him be here, but I wonder if we could spend, we don't have to spend all our time between now and then doing this, but if we could spend part of our time doing, 
coming up with our questions sort of as a group to be organized and to say, these are our questions about this appointment and these are, our, these are our comments about future process, mm -hmm. which we are going to put in writing at some point, but we'd love to bounce them off of you right now to get a sense of how you feel about that, but to separate the two things. So I don't wanna have one person asking about why not go back to the screening committee and then me follow up with, and why didn't you ask us as per our input on the job description? Like okay. that, that's two different parts, yeah. right? Because we are where we are but then for future to have that, but to have that preliminary conversation when he's here as well so that we can have something to write up that we can vote on at a future meeting and ask him to take into account like we have with, with our other requests. I think that would be useful. So with regard to the process, so nothing having to do with this in particular candidate, but the process that uh, brought this candidate forward. What are our questions? What are our interests? Uh, we know Darcy had a question about uh, why, uh, Darcy and Alyssa, about what the decision was not to bring forth other people to interview. Other questions? I'm wondering what his vision is or what, his, uh, what he's hoping, uh, what's he looking for? Uh, what's, where is he seeing the senior center going? Or does, is he, I mean, does he have any larger sort of uh, vision for it? Or is he simply looking for someone who will bring something, bring that to the table? What, um, so more general sort of, I guess, abstract or philosophical question of what um, um, his, um, sense of what, where he wanted the senior center to be, to be going. Um, okay. I assume he chose someone that he felt would uh, lead it in a certain direction or and address certain issues. Um, so I guess that would be something I'd be like to hear a little bit about. Um, what's his vision for this department? Is that too, maybe that's a bit too abstract, I don't know. But. Well, so I'm, I'm putting, I'm trying, again, I'm very process versus person. Yeah. I'm, tr I'm putting that under person because that has to do with what qualifications he's looking for in an individual, right? And building on that, it also separately goes up in the process question. Because <laughs> if, no, it goes in fall with you. a variation because <laughs> if he had communicated to us what he believed that vision was a couple months ago, when he posted the job description back in April, he could have, ex I mean, because a job description and a vision aren't necessarily the same, right? A lot of the job description is the legalese that's required for job descriptions. If he had brought us into the process as a council, I'm not talking about OCA, as council and said, these are the things I'm looking for. Now it's a new day and, you know, senior s services have changed and mm -hmm. these, are, these are the inputs I've gotten from our former director of long standing. And so we're thinking we're going in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That would have been a thing to, he so it's a thing to hear now associated with this person because mm -hmm. otherwise we're just hearing a whole lot about how interesting her qualifications are but not really clear on qualifications meaning meeting that vision. And But in terms of process, it's understanding if you Bring us into the process, again, not asking for our approval of your job description or even our approval of your vision, but to bring us on board with your ideas. Then later, when in the process, we're able to say, that makes total sense based on what he told us about his process. Or he's decided that what he thought in April made sense. The people who actually showed up for interviews were able to do this, and this is why this person actually is gonna take us where we need to go for this other subset of things. Oh. And, and this reflects again back to our conversations about appointment, uh, committee appointments of his. Rather than, wow, they have a really nice degree from a really nice institution, what does that bring to this particular set of needs that this particular committee has at any given, at, at, this, at this given moment, which may be different than two years ago or five years from now. And so it's both a process question for future, but it's also a specific on this. On, and not picking on this individual at all. It's just the way the report's written. Okay. 
Other thoughts on questions for the town manager regarding process or the person you put forward or things that we, more information that we would like? Just what I had said, what I had said before about what um, um, the issue of experience in older services, um, what he, I guess, what he saw in this candidate that balanced, you know, that weighed more heavily toward hiring her in, in spite of the fact that she is um, weak in experience in other services. Other thoughts on questions or information we're looking for for when the town manager gets here regarding the person or the process? Does anyone, and I will say, sort of building on what Darcy just said, when I did read the job description, I thought it was interesting that working in a senior center was not one of the qualifications. Because ha had he, under what Alyssa is suggesting, brought to us a job description, I would have said, whoa, hold on, Isn't, wouldn't it be beneficial for someone to have worked in a senior center? Um, which is nowhere in any of the, the requirements or the qualifications, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and, that's, and that gets back to what I said about comparing a person's, uh, the person's resume with um, the job description is when I compare the two, I actually think she ends up pretty well, but I was surprised at, at some of the, the decisions in the job description. Um, yeah, Alyssa. So following up a little, and I realize with, with vacation, when we don't meet every single week, we don't have everything at the tip of our fingertips like we did, so like thanks for pulling this together, is two things. One is you notice that the job posting, if you go back, is looking for a senior center director mm -hmm. to manage our senior center program. However, the appointment that's on our, in front of us is the director of senior services. Mm -hmm which I would argue is slightly different, right? And that, that partly plays into that idea. One would perhaps think that a person applying to be director of senior services may have ever worked in a senior center, but if you're not director, but if you're saying it's a director of senior services, that kind of does leave more space mm -hmm. for it to be something else, right? Because if all the other 25 people who applied thought they were gonna be senior center directors, well, I've never been a senior center director, I guess I won't apply. Um, you know, it, it, it is slightly different concept in the reality that's been put forward to us. Director of Senior Services, which is not what the job description says, it says Senior Center Director. And so I appreciate the broader view, right? That's one of the things I think the town has been moving toward is not being so siloed, but it's not exactly the same thing. So I'd like to have a question about that, like, that's part of that vision thing, I think, George, we come right back to is, mm -hmm. you might have started out thinking it was a senior service, senior center director, but you realized as you went along, oh, what we really need is a director of senior services, and the director part is not as critical. The other part that I don't think is in the packet, although I'm having some trouble with the town council packet, but I'm looking at the public packet, because to me that's the one that matters, because that's the one the public sees, is that the information that I requested and that Evan was copied on then says where this was advertised. And have you guys seen that? Because I don't, that's not in the packet. And so are that's something. Are you talking about that's, the that's in that old email from the town manager to me. His actual that, email text, not yeah. the. And so, right. and then there might have even been some attachments. And so. I, I transferred all the attachments over. But I think but the not, text. But not the email. And so we just need Sorry, to get a copy of the email over. And I'll, we should ask that be added to the public packet too because the other, so aside from this particular individual, it also should be, you know, part of this process that we outline is when it's a, you know, this is bigger than appointments to committees, right? This is a department head. So right. he said what professional magazines he advertised this in. I think that's worth us knowing 
because if you, it's just like every other kind of search. Did you do a national search? Did you do an international search? Did you do a Western mass search? I mean, what kind of search did you do? Mm -hmm. And that's information mm -hmm. I believe as a town councilor who wasn't sitting here at OCA, I would want to have. And that's not in our packet right now, but we'll find it um, because it's, it's around. And so that is available out there and that should be part of our future process that we get, we are provided that information in the final report. Okay. Uh, so, uh, information on job postings. So you, you're say, so the the memo that the town manager provided us. You're saying that you would like that information from that email to be in future memos. Yes, like I mean that standard thing we did when we hired this town manager is where did you advertise it? Well, we put it in the beacon, you know, which you're all now familiar with. You know, we put we put the advertisement different places. People should know that those are the places we advertised. That's part of the demographics issue, in fact, because that's who you reach. Okay. Other thoughts on person or process? So there was some comment on only interviewing one person despite receiving 28 applications. Um, do we feel or have question, do we feel comfortable with or have questions about other parts of the process such as the screening committee, the people who are on it, um, or do we feel comfortable with that? So the screening committee was chaired by uh, Julie Fetterman, Health Center Director, included Human Resources Director, uh, Council on Aging Chair, LSSE Director, um, and a Director of Member Services for the Massachusetts Council on Aging. Do we feel comfortable with that? Do we have questions about screening committee at all? Seems like we do not. Maybe we do, Alyssa. I'd be, I guess for process, right? And so I'm trying to understand process versus the individual right. Is that I have a ten, I have a, t I, I have a push pull in terms of wanting to have a relatively small screening committee, mm -hmm. but at the same time not be overloaded with professionals. And so I want to make sure, and so I appreciate that he, that the agency I'd never heard of that he brought in, which was great, because we obviously thought their insight would be valuable. But I'm a little concerned about there being one recipient of services, so to speak, mm -hmm. on the committee, mm -hmm. because there can be a really large diversity of opinion about the services that are being provided by any program. And so to say we picked one feels a little. You're talking about Council on Aging Chair? Yeah, the Council on Aging it Chair would, is it. It would, you would There's want like four people from Council no, on Aging? I actually, you know, maybe or, even somebody who wasn't even part of the structure, so, so to speak. So someone who literally, or if not that, because again, I, I get, you don't want to have a huge screening committee. You want to have people who can commit to the time, et cetera. But if not that, if not an actual recipient of services beyond the Council on Aging Chair, the Council on Aging is actually a separate agency required by the state. That is different than just the average person who, including my mother-in-law, shows up for exercise class at the senior center or to get lunch at the senior center or whatever. And so if instead, saying, you know, these are the people I'd want to have together screening, and they had to go through 28 applications, blah, blah, blah. But then I would want to hear that the council on aging person or one of the other people felt some obligation to do some outreach to the rest of the service recipients to say, we're going to be hiring somebody. Is there something you've always wanted to say, but you were afraid to say to the person who's been the director for 40 years, or that you loved about that person that you want to make sure continues? in the next person because the council on it, like I said that's a separate agency you yeah. know, that's not even the services that we necessarily provide and in fact there's 
plenty of confusion about who does what to us in the general public as to understanding those things. But the Council on Aging is not the senior center per se, and it's certainly not all the recipients of services. So I'd like to know that some outreach was done to them, even if it was just a quick, when we did lunch, we asked people for suggestions one time or something. Gotcha. Some kind of outreach, especially after somebody's been there a super long time and they may want to really emphasize the strengths that person had and say, we really need somebody to continue to do the amazing things that person did in this area. And I also wish, because now I, you know, I came, moved here from Connecticut and what they did there was really valuable and I hope you'll consider that. But to say that that one person just knows that by showing up now, it's entirely possible that person did do some outreach, but there's no description of that. Okay. So we can ask about that. So what I have so far is a question about why another candidate was not brought forward when one of the two people who were put forward to be interviewed uh, dropped out. Uh, a question about what the town manager's vision is for the senior center. Um, and, and, and how that influences what he's looking for in a person. Um, a question about pairing that vision with bringing us into the process earlier to see the job description perhaps give some input. Uh, we're looking at information on the job posting locations and the postings actually being in the report, in the memo, uh, so we know what the posting was and, and where it was advertised ahead of time. Uh, we have a question about um, this person's uh, you know, lack of experience in your senior center and their relationship to elder services, uh, what this person's experiences bring to the department, so beyond just professional credentials, just how does this, how does this person's experience fit with the vision uh, that we'd ask the town manager to articulate. Uh, there was some question about why it went from senior center director versus director of senior services, um, and a question about the screening committee, uh, including someone who is not part of the existing structure, who receives services, or any outreach to those who receive services at the senior center. Uh, have I mischaracterized any of those, or are there any that someone wants to add to those? Darcy. Uh, it just seems like it, um, you know, I see that there was a press release on July 9th yep. announcing her appointment, and it seems like if we are going to have a meaningful part of this process that it would be nice to ask the town manager to hold off on his announcement until the town council has acted, which is always just going to be a couple of weeks or around that time. Within, it has to be within 14 days. <laughs> so because it's unlikely that we're going to act against an appointment that's already been made public. So some concern about the press release seemingly appointing someone before the council has actually acted. Yeah. It does mention that, that it still has to go to the council, but, um, you know, <laughs> it's hard to act when it's been announced publicly. Alyssa? So I, I appreciate you bringing that up because I, I have mixed feelings about that. One is that it's exactly true that if once somebody's been announced in a press release, now the bar's that much higher for us to say, yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, that's also the way this form of government works, uh, you know, speaking back to George, it is his appointment. And so unless the town council, not just OCA, but the town council comes up with a reason to say no, that is his appointment. And it's also in terms of like, you know, getting the person, getting the, you know, some people wouldn't want it announced, right, until it was like right before our conversation because of their current employment or other possibilities. But if they're ready to have people know about it, then it does put, it, it, it actually very purposefully puts the burden on us to say no. And I, I'm, although I find it difficult, it, it makes me feel uneasy, I think it actually is appropriate. Because if he doesn't do that, then fewer people know about it. And it does, I think it, it is not unreasonable, I mean, perhaps not ideal, because of exactly what we said in terms of it makes our jobs more awkward, 
but the reality is it is his appointment unless we can convince a majority of the town council it's a bad idea. So for him to put it out there says, well, now the burden's on you. Mm -hmm. I've done my job. Mm -hmm. And arguably, at least more people know about it this way than would know if it was just in our packet. If it's just in our packet during the summer, like literally nobody knows that, that we'd be appointing this person. And so if somebody had strong opinions about it, that would actually elicit maybe some of those opinions and they would come to public comment or individually talk to us and say, wow, I saw that press release and I was like, shh, I gotta talk to you about this. So I, I agree that it puts the burden on us, but I'm not sure that's wrong. And so I'm not sure I'm willing to say that he shouldn't do it. I just think we all need to understand that he's gonna, if, that he's gonna do it and kind of, and then make our peace with it or ask him not to. But it is definitely a different part of doing things than one might normally expect. Darcy. I guess I feel like it's our job to try to maintain our part of the process and not worry about his. Um, and that if we feel like it, it, we can do our job better without um, the early announcement, then we should ask for that. He may, he may very well say, you know, I'm still going to do this. Um, but it seems to me appropriate for us to ask for it um, because that would help us do our job. Okay. Other thoughts on process? or a person, qualifications, that we want to ask the town manager when he shows up. Alyssa? If I could just follow up quickly, I want Dar so, so Darcy yes. and I are in disagreement, and that's totally fine, but I think that's something that actually could be mentioned in your verbal report tonight as an example of things we're sorting through, because we could take a vote and see how it turns out, obviously, and again, like Darcy points out, the town manager could do whatever he's gonna do. But I'm, by the end of my long protracted speech, I came up with the idea that in fact it actually was to our advantage to let the public know even though it made me uneasy to have him do it ahead of time versus it makes our jobs more difficult because it, by, if, we with, if we ask him to withhold it, fewer people know about it and that seems less helpful to our process. But we can, we can totally agree to disagree on that. I'm just, I'm just saying this is an example of a we don't know the right answer to this question and we're going to sort through after we get some answers to his questions when he gives us some answers today and then we have our discussion tonight at town council and then the next time we come to OCA we may you know we may go one direction or another but I don't think we have to decide on that right now but that is a good interesting point of disagreement at this point. Sarah. So I guess for me, this comes back to, and we may never do this process again, but for the interview designee from OCA going to interview people and then bringing back their recommendations, um, <clears throat> there was some discussion that we had that once those recommendations came back to us and we felt since uh, people had been informed that it's possible that they could be appointed, that then the, the pressure was on, on OCA and to say yes. And I, I think it was that we all established the fact that if that were the case and we allowed that to happen, then we had therefore effectively taken out any kind of check and balance there was. So I can see Alyssa's point in that if the town manager's appointment does go out ahead of time, I would agree if, if the, um, it would give the community at large a chance to sort of digest that themselves and people who had applied to digest that themselves and then um, have a chance then to come forward and say, wow, I think this is great, or someone could say, I have a really big problem with blah, 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 because of. And I also think that this council has to work with the town manager, be respectful of the town manager. We ask for that in return. But I, I don't think that either the town manager needs to feel like everything he does, um, the town council has to ratify completely and jump up and down and say that's great nor do I think that, that we need to do that with the town manager. There are definitely respectful ways to disagree sometimes and to work out a different solution. And I don't 
I, don't, I think we should try to make sure that we stand up for not having that pressure just to say yes. Okay. Other thoughts? All right, so I think this was actually very useful. Um, so we have several questions or comments for the town manager for when he arrives hopefully shortly after 11.15. Um, which is a half an hour from now. Uh, I think we also have probably a better understanding at this point about uh, what we're looking for when we're evaluating candidates or when we're evaluating town manager appointments to department heads um, with regard for the information we're looking for from the process, both what should be included, um, what questions we might have, and also questions that we would have about the person. So I think that we can have a good uh, conversation about the person uh, the town manager has put forward. Um, but it makes sense, of course, to have that conversation when the town manager is present to answer some of the questions that have already been brought up. So, you know, did you have a comment? I was just gonna ask, what did we end up saying about demographics? Because I know we've gone around and around and around <laughs> on this. Right. But right. when it comes to a pool of 28, it seems entirely fair to give us something on a pool of 28. Yep. And so that's both, I think, and I don't want to speak for you, Darcy, but I think that that's not only appropriate for this particular question for today, for, for this person, what were the demographics for the pool of 28, but also for the future process question is coming up with some sort of understanding as if there's three people applying, I am not going to say much, but if there's 28 or 50 people applying, we could give those demographics because that's not likely to be personally identifiable and right. cause a problem. And it will be really interesting to know if all 28 who applied were women. I mean, that that is worth knowing as, yeah. as a piece of information. And so I think that's both a specific to the person and also a process. Okay. All right, so I think we've exhausted agenda item <laughs> three. Agenda item four, we're waiting for the town manager um, to be present. Um, taking things a little bit out of order just because we've so thoroughly discussed this, I'm wondering if we can now go um, and do public comment in case anyone in the public has any thoughts on what we've just dis discussed for the past um, hour and a half. So is anyone here to give public comment? Okay. So come up. Uh, it's all useful. So we just need your name. Sure. My name is Mark Parent and I'm chair of the ZBA and I'm here representing the committee as a whole. After an administrative meeting we voted to have an uh, opportunity to present our view to the committee, this committee, relative to the failure to appoint Keith Langsdale to a position on the ZBA. Um, Keith is, the, um, is one of the most senior and most experienced people on the committee and has spent hours and hours working for the town in that capacity and was probably most likely the next chair uh, in the committee, uh, for the committee. The uh, failure to appoint him to a full position um, eliminates that experience uh, going forward. Uh, we are not clear on, <clears throat> and appointing, even now, appointing him to a, a, an alternate position uh, doesn't fix the problem immediately. Uh, we are bound to use our full members for every panel. We don't select uh, uh, alternate members just as a matter of course when we're viewing special permits. If, in fact, a uh, full member is not available, then an alternate fills the slot. Um, the, uh, we're not clear on the committee's decision or the reasoning for the failure to appoint uh, and bring someone new in. If it was to bring a new perspective onto the committee, a new blood, um, then it's important for me to share with you the role of the ZBA in the, in the process of special permits so that you understand better that uh, personal perspectives are not part of uh, the ZBA. We are a quasi-judicial uh, body set up under Chapter 40, uh, 40A of the uh, Commonwealth Laws, and we, draw, we are mandated to follow the bylaw. 
the bylaw is what determines um, our actions. Uh, we are interpreting the bylaw when it's not clear uh, to people, uh, but we do not make rules. Uh, we don't put our, we work very hard at keeping personal perspectives out of the decisions. Um, this is a common misconception. Uh, oftentimes when we're faced with, um, I'll use an example, a two-family home, uh, uh, someone asking for a special permit for a two-family home, especially one that's not owner occupied, we, we always, I shouldn't say always, we most often see a, a vast majority of the neighbors out um, opposing the special permit for that two-family home because of the issues that we've had in town relative to student housing. Um, I can tell you that in at least six different occasions when public outcry has been significant and opposed to the special permit, after we've heard their comments and we make sure that we hear all of the issues that they have with the, with the property, um, we explain to them that the special permit is their friend, not their enemy. This is, there are two elements of a special permit. There's the use of the use and the use of the use. So the use itself is a two-family home. Is a two-family home appropriate in a neighborhood? Uh, if there are other two-family homes in that neighborhood, then clearly it's appropriate. The second part of that is how it's used. And how it's used is mandated and controlled by the conditions that we apply to the special permit. Hearing the concerns that people have about uh, the previous use, we apply conditions that ensure that the future management of that property is done in an appropriate manner. Uh, and I will tell you that without, without question, people have gone away and, and changed their position uh, and said, no, we need a special permit and make sure that there are conditions in place. That all of that process comes with experience and over time. I served on the committee, I have served on the committee for 12 years and I'm in my last year at uh, the request to continue when the committee went from three to five. Uh, it's a, a challenge to manage three, you know it's a challenge to manage five, um, especially in the process of, of the ZBA. So I'm offering all of this not for two purposes. One, to make sure that um, if there's an opportunity to reconsider Keith as a position, even at an alternate, um, it would be beneficial to the town to have his experience. And two, as you're faced with future appointments to the ZBA, understanding the role that we have and the elimination of personal perspective in the process is very critical. Uh, if you want something done different in town, now I'm addressing the broader uh, town council, if you will. If you want something different in town than what you're getting now, it's a bylaw change, not a change to a committee, especially the ZBA. Uh, if you're unhappy with the way things are run in a neighborhood because of uses, it's a bylaw change that needs to be put forward. And they should be put forward in a manner that's uh, in concert with the history and the process of the ZBA. Um, I will share with you, and I've shared it many times, there is, and I'm going to go to the planning board to uh, apply f or encourage them to change one of the bylaw provisions. Um, I'll do that after I'm off the ZBA. Uh, but the bylaw provision that has a use expire on change of ownership within a certain district within town was put forward by town meeting member with some statistics that led you to believe that the fix was in owner occupancy, not in the use itself. Uh, it was misconceived. It's not in the best interest of the town. Uh, Non-owner occupancy or owner occupancy does not fix a problem with a property. Uh, it is the conditions that you can apply to a special permit, not the expiration. The expiration of a, uh, of a use saying it no longer is a two-family home um, when somebody tries to sell it is detrimental to the town. Uh, people won't invest in a two-family home uh, if they know their use of a two-family home is expired. Uh, and I know this is more information than you probably <laughs> wanted, uh, but I'll restate the, the original content, intent here was to reconsider Keith as a position on the ZBA and to consider the actual operations of the ZBA when appointing new members uh, going forward. And I'll be happy to answer if anybody has questions. I probably overstayed my welcome as it is. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for your time. Any other public comment? Okay. So, agenda item five 
is consideration of town manager appointments to multiple member bodies filed with the town clerk. Uh, the town manager has filed with the town clerk uh, board of health appointments, which I believe I added to your packet this morning. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so my question first for the committee, uh, I have had, uh, the town manager was nice enough to give us uh, on OCA a, a very small advance on these. Um, my understanding per a conversation with him was he was going to file these mid last week. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, so we have the option, given that they were filed this morning, we do have the option of taking these up on our August 12th meeting for the council to act on at their August 19th meeting and still be within the 30 days. Um, that said, I would expect, uh, given a conversation I've had with the town manager, that we likely will get um, a fairly substantial number of appointments, um, possibly another four um, before the town council's August 19th meeting uh, that we might want to act on. And so the question is, um, we can discuss these Board of Health appointments um, today and vote on them today. We can discuss them today, um, but perhaps hold off on voting until um, August 12th, or we can vote on them today. Um, they're not on the agenda for the council tonight, but they, but we could talk to, I could talk to Lynn. Um, but the question for the committee is, have you had time to look at these and do you want to discuss them today or do we want to table them? George. I have looked at them and I would like to discuss them if the others are willing. Um, I think there are two issues here that um, I'm concerned about. One is the importance of, of being able to uh, have a quorum. Um, this uh, committee is struggling with that. And secondly, uh, I believe the state law requires uh, their charge or their charter, whatever requires that there be a medical doctor um, on the, someone with an MD on the Board of Health, and at the moment they do not have that person. Um, and so one of the appointments, one of the new appointments is an MD. So I think there are two reasons um, that I would put forward for us both to talk about this today, if people are willing, and actually to vote on it, um, rather than wait until August uh, 19th. Um, okay. Do other, have others looked at this? Do we feel comfortable? discussing these today. Alyssa? So I'm, I'm not a big fan of doing something with relatively short notice and having to do the unanticipated because the names were, the names themselves were unanticipated. But given the upcoming workload and given that we'll already have the town manager here and we can ask him any questions about these individuals about or about his appointment process, it seems like we could just go ahead with it tonight. And truly, we are at a transition phase mm -hmm. in our appointment process. And so I'm not feeling as beholden as I was when we had our own appointments, like we do for tonight for Finance Committee, um, to our process associated with his appointments, which again are approve and reject. And so. Although for our appointments as a town council, I would never say, ah, let's just give them a verbal report tonight and they can work with it. Um, for, except for the one we're actually gonna do that with tonight because the 14 day notice, I'm babbling. Um, I think it's fine to go ahead with these today because I don't think we're gonna learn anything between now and then. Okay. So I'm fine with doing that. And again, having the opportunity to ask him questions because we know he'll be here today, I think is helpful. Okay. So then with that, so the town manager has filed with us uh, names for Board of Health. There are three names. Uh, Stephen George, who is a reappointment, a reappointment for a three-year term. Uh, Maureen Malaya for a two-year term. And Timothy Randier for a two-year term. Uh, we have profiles. Um, we have fairly thorough profiles for the two new members. We have a fairly sparse profile um, for the reappointment, um, although it does provide at least professional credentials. Uh, we have a summary of the process. 
uh, questions, greater information that we're looking for, given that the town manager will be here, hopefully in 15 minutes. George? I happen to know Stephen George personally. I don't know if that's really relevant, but um, I'm deeply impressed by his uh, commitment to the Board of Health, so at least I can speak to that. He takes very seriously um, his uh, responsibility. Um, so uh, while his description here is not lengthy, he has already served for three years, and my personal impression is one of someone who takes it very seriously, and um, so I would certainly add my personal endorsement to his reappointment for what that's worth. Sarah? So while we're talking about descriptions of people who are reappointments, you know, I think that we've all done a good job. At least one of us has known someone who's been for reappointment. But what I think is interesting is usually one of us can say something more than what's in the description of what we know about the person. So again, I would like to maybe see a little bit about like some highlights of things. It doesn't have to be. But I mean, just some highlights of things they've done or has shown, you know, George, would you add anything for, you just think this person's, you just uh, no, found I, them I, to be like hardworking and, and earnest or? The kind of person that, that um, if you put on a, a border committee in this town would, would show up at every meeting and would take his work seriously. Um, and, uh, uh, but no, I can't speak to See, a specific, so even, yeah, right. but even that would be, I feel like it's great to know. Cause I mean, that was one of the things that we talked about for people being on committees is them carrying their workload, you know, and, and always being at meetings and, or always being thoughtful in discussion. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a, a pain and say, that'd be awesome if we saw something like that from down and, and thank you, George. Alyssa? So, again, process versus these people. Right. So, I guess it's process, which yeah. is knowing more about these individuals. I don't care how long that someone's been a member of the Board of Health and that we think they should, ju and they should just get reappointed. It's, I want to know what they brought. Like, they attend every meeting and they helped spearhead such and such project, or they encouraged people to come to a particular forum that was really valuable because it helped us rewrite this particular regulation, or something. Not just they show up, they do their work, they're comp What does competent mean? I mean, it should say something. And if you can't say something about somebody, then why do you think they should be reappointed? Just because they've been sitting there for three years and they want to do it again? So that's my, that's my base disagreement, and George and I disagree on this, which is that I don't think just showing up is necessarily enough. I think that we need to both, on the one hand, say, thank goodness we have volunteers, and on the other hand, say, but what are they bringing to the table? And so I have no problem whatsoever with the reappointment of Stephen George. That is not the question mm -hmm. here. It's being able to provide a description, and I think part of the underlying problem, it reflects back to my frustration that there is the refusal to interview people who are already in the slot. I would much prefer to see interviews done of the person who's already there, especially given that in some cases, as these appointments play out, this particular town manager has never met this person unless they happen to talk to them on the phone or happen to show up at a meeting because they weren't part of the initial appointment process. So this is not blaming this particular town manager. It's saying that players change. And so for the department head to be able to say, yes, this person has been a really valuable addition, or this person, we are not talking about any of these individual people. We're talking about hypothetical people. This person has been really challenging to work with, but they represent a constituency that I don't think I would hear from otherwise. Like those kinds of things, maybe we wouldn't want to phrase that in a written document, but something like that that shows me why we are doing this rather than they did it for three years, nobody's making overt complaints, so we'll just go ahead and reappoint them. That frustrates me in terms of what we're trying to come up with in terms of committees moving forward. And it also frustrates me because it means that when you say you have committee vacancies, 
you should be really upfront about the fact that there's no vacancy for the spot of somebody who's already been there because you can't get into that spot because that person's gonna get automatically reappointed because they don't even get interviewed. So I, I'm just uneasy with the underlying assumption that which I think I, we're hearing regularly, like we're so glad so many people wanna be involved. Well, so am I, but that doesn't mean they all belong in some particular committee appointment. We need to find good fits for people. And I hope we find good fits for everybody, but I don't understand why somebody who's already there just is automatically assumed to be a good fit and nothing against any of the people who are on this particular body, which I appreciate all their work and I don't want them mad at me because they have a lot of individual power. So as a board, <laughs> so as the board of health, they get to do a lot of things without anybody else's say so, so I don't need any of them cranky at me. But it's, it's awkward and so I think that's part of the underlying thing, right? So if I knew that all these people were getting interviewed, right, and said, yep, given where we are right now, I would be much easier with having less information on the report. Or if I knew it had been made clear that automatically we are gonna reappoint people who, and so therefore there are really only X number of openings, so don't bother to apply. If you think you're gonna be one of 70 people applying, yeah, we wish. Um, that's the kind of concern I have is process-wise that because we don't have that underlying process, that means I want more words in this or one way or the other. Sarah? So I agree with Alyssa 100%. I guess what I was saying, I guess I just came at a much gentler way because I haven't had as much caffeine. But that's, I, I do agree with Alyssa because I, I do agree with the point that she's made consistently that just because someone's been on doesn't automatically mean, unless we want to come out and just say, you know, uh, one term is three years and you're automatically going to be on for six and we just go with that. Like, just say it if that's what we are saying. But I would rather, as Alyssa said, take a look at the end of someone's term, interview everyone, and then see what they bring to the table. And again, I do want to see, you know, what amazing things this person did um, on the committee and, and that's why they're still like excited to be there and that's why they also deserve a spot. George. First of all, I'm, I'm deeply wounded that my, my word is not sufficient <laughs> to guarantee <laughs> someone's bona, fide, bona fides. But over passing by my, my wound, um, I wouldn't say I disagree 100% with uh, Alyssa and with Sarah, but um, <laughs> oh. maybe 75%. Um, <laughs> I do feel that if you've gone through this process once and you have been approved, that I think it's not unreasonable to have the assumption that if you wish to continue serving, um, and I would also add that, uh, well, that you sh there should be an assumption that you, would, you can continue or you should continue. Um, uh, I think the town has always struggled, as I think many towns do, to get people involved and keep them involved. And if someone uh, has served on a body um, and wants to continue to be involved, um, the idea that somehow we're going to re-scrutinize them again as if they were complete newbies um, is, I think, a little, sends a message. And maybe it's a message that this body wants to send. It's not a message that I'm uh, particularly eager to send. I want to encourage uh, people to be engaged and active um, and not, uh, well, so I guess I do have that assumption um, that I would never put in writing, nor should we, but I think that um, if you are serving on a body and you would like to continue serving, and I, I would assume also that, that there would be some input from the chair Right? Um, now, it gets tricky if it's the chair. <laughs> um, and Alyssa would point that out quickly. But um, uh, so this is not, I won't, go die, I won't go to the mat on this, but I, I do think that I have personally the uh, feeling that, I have this feeling that if you've served for three years and you're up for reappointment, um, that, that you get some bonus points for that, I guess. <laughs> sure. Sorry. Please, sir. So I just want you to know, George, that because you personally said that it was okay, I remember I did say then that's good for me. So <laughs> yes, someone and finds my word. It's absolutely okay to disagree with me at, at any time, I and know. I think that my my saying this also comes from being on committees for many many years, and I think 
you know, I think it all depends, and, and I think it's okay to say yes when it's right, and I think there are some times when maybe you should just, you ask someone, is there a different committee you'd like to, to serve on? So, I mean, I think there's, there's a fine point there, but I, I appreciate your opinion. Super fast. I wouldn't at all treat them as complete newbies, George. But okay. Come on, come on. You know I'm not treating them as complete newbies. That's a completely different. Okay. Why are you? So, that, that's not what I consider the interview process to be for. It's not to. It's look at them. Look at their experience. That's probably pretty amazing experience that outweighs replacing them with somebody else. Mm. But let's find out by doing the actual interview. And that's even assuming we do interviews, right? So the, you know, there's that whole conversation to be had in the future. But I don't see, I, you absolutely do give them the benefit of the doubt by the fact that they're coming in with all this experience. And that was actually one of the things I was disappointed and that we will have the future conversation about process around our CIF obviously doesn't capture what we want it to capture in terms of when we did have people reapply for the things we were appointing here as town council they didn't tell us enough about their accomplishments to actually make that get credit as opposed to being treated like a newbie off the street who knows nothing about anything. All right, so to be respectful of the town manager's time, <laughs> um, let's return to our discussion of director of senior services appointment. Hi, Paul. Hi. Thank you for coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so in our discussion of uh, your appointment for director of senior services, uh, we found ourselves with a number of questions um, and also perhaps some requests. Uh, I've written them down, but would probably prefer not to read all of them to the town manager. So if folks want to, would, do you want me to? All right. All right. Um, so we divide these up between sort of the process to bring forward someone and and uh, evaluating an appointment. Uh, an appointment. Um, so starting with the process, there was a question about why. Uh, when only two people were brought forward from the pool and one withdrew, uh, there wasn't any decision to bring forward um, another person. Uh, what, what was the conversation behind uh, only interviewing one person when the other interviewee uh, withdrew? Mm -hmm. So I had I met with the, inter the interview team that did the initial interviews. They were comfortable with bringing two people forward. Um, and they didn't think anybody else would, um, should be brought forward because they wouldn't have recommended them. So to, to bring forward someone just to bring them forward, they didn't seem, it, it didn't mm -hmm. resonate with the interview committee because they were not recommending them. And um, it was not a um, giant pool. And so they felt bringing the two and then one person took another position. And I did struggle with that because I don't like having just one person to interview. Uh, this person uh, that I'm recommending uh, or re re referred to you uh, was um, uh, was sort of knocked my socks off. I think she was um, did really well, and I felt comfortable pushing her forward. Um, part of the calculation also was um, filling a position where the previous person had worked for the town for 47 years, and. Um, knowing that whoever was going to take on that task was going to have a pretty big challenge uh, in terms of making change. And I felt this person uh, in particular was, would be very adept at managing the change that was going to happen, because change was going to happen no matter what. We weren't always going to be doing it the same way. And I felt like she was very strong in that, in that regard. Um, had I felt it been a marginal call, I probably would have gone out and re-advertised. Uh, mm -hmm for the position. Mm -hmm. uh, while we're on that, does anyone have any follow-up questions on that in particular? No? No? Okay, then. 
Uh, so there was a question about, and this is a little bit of a, a broader question, mm -hmm. about um, sort of what you saw, uh, where you saw the senior center was going, what the, the vision of the senior center was, given that we just had someone retire who had served there for so long, um, and how um, that informed both what you were looking for and the experience that you saw this person bringing to the department. So, I mean, one of the things I've said a couple, for the last couple of years is wanting to become more of an age-friendly community. Uh, and what does that mean? It, it means where we're more attuned to people who are aging in place, you know, who, are, who are experiencing dementia, um, but want to be able to live at home. Um, providing transportation to people who are having challenges with transportation, because that becomes a big issue for people living at home. Transportation is probably the number one challenge for seniors and be able, being able to get, get around. Um, so the traditional senior center is important, but I don't see a building being built in the foreseeable future when we see all the other needs. So having someone who's looking at the array of um, services that we needed to provide and someone who had, um, she, uh, had experienced it herself with her parents um, was, was pretty powerful to me. So in terms of where the senior center is going, I think it's more about policy orientation uh, in terms of what, we're, what we need to be offering as a community. And also um, recognizing that tr the traditional idea of senior citizens isn't what this town is going to be embracing. Uh, people are here um, totally engaged and active and move here because they want to be living in an active community uh, where, where, where uh, people over 55, over 60, over 65, over 70 want to be involved in, in, in things, want to be act physically active and providing the resources for them to be able to do, to do that. So I was uh, in sync with what Mary Beth uh, what she, what the way she visioned uh, where, where we, she thought a senior center would go, and she was very creative in some of her thoughts on that. Is, can you, uh, there was, so building on that, there was some question about uh, her seeming lack of experience in a senior center with elder services, so it's possible to build on that? Yeah, so that was, that was a challenge because she, um, there weren't a lot of people out there, and I, you'll know, I think Southampton and Hadley both have vacancies now in their senior director of senior services positions. They've just announced the resignation or the retirements of their people. Um, so I thought uh, she has not run, I had concerns uh, in some sense. She had not run an organization like this. Um, she had not had, um, terrific experience with supervising people, and that was a concern. Um, but her strengths uh, far outweighed those, and I also felt that where she was weak, uh, we could coach her and had, uh, could mentor her on some of the things, like on supervising individuals. We, we have a lot of support for something like that. Um, and I also, frankly, wanted someone to be thinking outside the box on um, on senior services and not say this is the way this town did it so we should do it that way too. We certainly want to learn from other communities but um, I think we're going to be uh, blazing our own path in a lot of ways on, these, on this issue. Okay. And I think she was very open and eager to, to be in that role. Are there any follow-up questions from the committee on either the points of the vision of the senior center, how that informed what the town manager was looking for, or uh, this candidate's uh, experience, George? It sounds like that the committee that was doing this search for you uh, and you shared a common vision, do you feel like that you were on the same page? Um, and maybe that explains why 26 of the 28 candidates didn't make the cut, or is it, they were, they were all over the map, so it's not, there's no single, but uh, I guess I want to get a sense from you that, that this vision that you're starting to, to shape for the senior center is not just your personal vision, but it's actually being informed by uh, those that you've put together. There's been a kind of conversation back and forth, or, or, or no? Yeah, so, so the, the interview team that um, had a lot of the same visions, um, I, I can't say exactly that they all, you know, I, I can't speak for them, honestly. Um, and I guess your question is, okay, so if you had that vision, did is that what knocked out 
the other candidates that did not rise. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. And I think that that wasn't the, the situation. I think that the, the committee that reviewed them just didn't think they were at the quality or level of being a director of, of for the town of Amherst, mm -hmm. you know, a department head. Great. Uh, other follow-up questions on this candidate, this appoint, appointee's uh, experience or how that fits in with where the senior center, senior services are going? So there was one, one question about, and also maybe some concern about the fact that um, all of the job postings were for senior center director. Mm -hmm. um, we're now calling it director of senior services, which oh. sort of, make, and so there was, there was some question about whether, whether there was a feeling that perhaps people who had not had experience in a senior center might not have applied who, who would have maybe been better, been okay with a broader senior services. I think that's what, you were, mm -hmm. that was the last question. That's a really good point. I don't know the answer. That's uh, so. The, the concept would be that some people might have said, "Oh, I don't want to run a building. That's not what my forte is. I'm really into." It. it might have yielded that, but I think most people would, if they're in the field, they would know what um, you know Amherst provides. I, I just, you know, not really sure how that would impact the applicant pool. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a, a pretty sharp uh, perception, uh, ob obje observation. Any follow up on that question? I'm looking at you as your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you out. I mean, yes. Um, well, I mean, right. We don't know what we don't know, and I appreciate that things evolve over time. That even as the interview team was discussing it with you, it may well have been that it became clearer that this is the vision that you had, and so that's actually connected to one of our later process questions associated with vision and the town council at some point in the process. But in terms of answering this particular one, it, it was an evolution, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Uh, so another question we had regarding, so those are all sort of our, this individual questions, um, regarding the process. Um, so there was, some, there was some conversation, we didn't see the job description until um, a after we got the, the appointment. Um, and there was some discussion that, that we had in our conversation about how we even, what our role is with department heads and, and what we're looking at um, and what we should be looking at. Um, there was some discussion about OCA perhaps um, being involved earlier in the process and seeing the job description um, earlier and having an opportunity to sort of provide input. Um, not telling you what would be in the job description, I want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. um, but some some idea of knowing upfront what the vision of um, any position, any department head would be, and how that's influencing the job description, um, and and bringing uh, the town council in as part of that um, to perhaps provide input based on you know what we know of of the community. Um, and I think that's you know that's a hindsight question of. Um, you know, would it have been useful for the town council to understand sort of what you just told us about how you see senior services in Amherst being so much more than just the senior center um, early on and us being able to, to look at the job description and, and get a feeling um, that, that that vision was reflected within it? Yeah, so I guess that really is, leads to a conversation about what is, a, you know, the council's role in, in approving approving or not approving or not taking action on appointments and is it to just sort of say this person seems to meet the standards that we expect for a town or is it um, you know you know there's a relatively short time frame for your 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 action on these types of things which um, you know, on these individuals so I guess it's the bigger question is at what level of detail does the council expect to be involved with in the administration of the government? And I think that's a, definitely a conversation that, that will evolve and we should continue to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, the charter does presume that if there's a reorganization of government that that's a, that's a conversation that council should be involved with uh, in terms of um, you know, job descriptions for department heads. I don't know if that's how I would read the charter is having the council be involved at that level. Follow-up comments on that? 
George. You are right. This is a, a much bigger conversation. But this is a good example, I think, of how the choice of a department head is being shaped by a certain vision of where you want that department to go and what you want it to do. And I think it's valuable for us, first of all, to hear that from you, but also perhaps to be part of that conversation. Is this where we want the senior center to go? Is this our vision of um, uh, what we see coming in the future? I, I would suggest it probably is, I think this, but that's, I think, I think there we might have a role um, to play. Um, but certainly hearing from you at least what you have in mind, at least for this particular department, and what your thinking was um, is helpful to us um, and also may also be a place for a back and forth at some, in some way or other. Mm -hmm. Are there follow-up comments, questions on this aspect of process, job description, involvement of the council? Alyssa? So one of the things we talked about was, um, and I don't want to jump ahead, so excuse Fine. me if I'm uh, out of order, but the, in terms of the process, in terms of job description, et cetera, one of the things we talked about, and, and I'm hearing you know, what you're saying about how much is the town council involved, but as was described, just in terms of more of bringing the town council, whether it's at the OCA level or the full town council level, more on board with where you're trying to go so that by the time you got there at the end, we'd be able to say, yep, that so makes sense. He told us back in April, he originally thought of it this way, then he thought of it this way, these were the people he included on his interview that represent these constituencies. Yep, I see how we got to the end of this road. Whereas instead, and again, because this is new to all of us, including you, <laughs> is that to have to tell us anything other than what happens at the end, is if when it just comes at the end, it makes pretty much no sense for the charter to say approve or reject because based on what? I mean, we can't say that you followed a process when there wasn't a process we knew anything about until the process we were told at the end was the process that was undertaken. You're obviously not gonna write a memo to us that says, well, I thought my process should be this, but I decided to do something else because that would be the only way we'd be able to then say, oh, you didn't follow your own process. Like, it, it doesn't compute. And while, yes, we're not supposed to micromanage, and yes, this isn't to the level of reorganization. What we're trying to figure out, not so much for this appointment, but for future appointments, which who knows, maybe it'll be years. Well, it won't be years, we'll have the town clerk. But to do, to do this in future is for us to understand how do we get to this point rather than so that we can feel like we fulfilled our obligation of saying approve or reject. Right. Because otherwise, it feels a lot like, eh, he just does what he does, mm -hmm. and you know, we just let things go. Under what circumstances would we reject? I mean, it's hard to imagine the memo you would write to us that we would say, absolutely not, unless it was, as we discussed before you got here, some sort of the political machinations you see in other communities around diversity, for example, um, where people say, oh, it's not about that person, but I'm not approving anything else until you do this, that, or the other thing, and it's held that way, which is not something we're trying to recommend to anyone. But in order to say that we don't have any role except to approve or reject, but we don't have anything to base that approval and rejection on. And so that's why we're looking for things like if you would consider in the future, and we would talk more about this in the future, um, being willing to at least describe, hey, this is what I'm thinking of for a job description. Let me know if you have some thoughts about that. Not that you get to decide, you get to decide, because that's your job. Um, and then also to make sure to provide us with all the postings that went out to show that we complied with the charter in terms of the vacancy notice, et cetera, to not have to ask for those. And then also to add on the additional part about you know, like where you advertise, because that speaks to diversity as well. And I know we're gonna have a demographics question in a minute. But where you advertise obviously also has some impact as to where people will know about it, even though in this case, as is probably the case with most of our department heads, it's kind of a small pond that a lot of people circulate in within any particular state. So I think the charter is pretty clear about where the hiring authority lies with mm -hmm. the town manager. This one is called out differently for department heads where the council has a role um, if it chooses to exercise it. Um, and, 
but it doesn't provide any guidance on what that role is. I mean, it could be as, as limited as being this person is wholly incompetent and they happen to be related to you. That's why you're pushing them forward. <laughs> you know, it could be as low to, as low to the low bar as that, or it could be, you know, we expect to see all the applicants and you know, all the criteria. It could be a, a range, right? That's, that's the range. And that's where we're having the conversation. Um, where I would land on this is that the, the council uh, presumes that the manager is responsible for hiring his team. And unless there's something untoward, um, and I, I don't know if I agree that it's even necessarily your role to say, did you comply with the charter or the posting requirements? Because there's a lot of things that we have to comply with in terms of you know, hiring people. Did you do a quarry check? Did you do all these things? It's like, I don't think that that's the council's, mm -hmm. you know, the elected legislative body's role to, to be at that level of detail. Um, I think it's totally re responsible for you to say, did you meet all the requirements required to be able to hire this person and to have the town manager respond yes or no? Um, but, um, but I think that, again, I think that's, we're a shared government, we want, and I'm subservient to the council, so, um, but there's certain responsibilities that the manager has. So I want to, so when I have this conversation in a more comprehensive way, I think maybe I'd retreat or wherever in terms of how do you see the role of the council? Because it's your exercise, you can exercise your authority and I think you can, you know, you know, you can say until we get this stuff, we're not approving anything and we have that power and that's a very large power that you have. Um, so it's not um, my way or the highway type of conversation, it really is a conversation um, and how, where is that, where's the right place to be um, because I don't think that you would expect or the public would expect the town manager has unfettered sort of whatever they want because that's why they put this in the charter. They want someone to say, to double check at this level of department head appointments, is it the right place? And how we look at that is, that's what that's the conversation we're having right now, I guess. George? I'm gonna give a concrete example um, just for people to think about and for, for, for Paul to think about too. Um, you mentioned uh, we're going to be appointing or uh, right the clerk of the council or I'm sorry the the town clerk right, right? and um, we live in a college town and so a question I would have um, and I assume that, that that Paul would too would be what would be this person's uh, thoughts about college students and, and young people voting. Um, what's the, is that something that they would be interested in that they would write? And so if we had a candidate before us and um, that was put forward and they seemed indifferent to this or had no ideas or thoughts about how to further engage students, um, that would be a case where I might think, you know, I don't mm -hmm. think I could mm -hmm. approve this person, not because they're not necessarily qualified, but because um, given the town we live in, and given um, at least my sense that this is a very important issue, I would expect that a clerk, um, uh, the town clerk would be, so, for this town, would be someone who would have a special interest or at least some thoughts about mm -hmm. um, how to engage and to reach out to students in terms of um, uh, elections and so forth. So that would be for me an example. Maybe that's just my particular but that's an example of some an appointment where it's more than just qualifications. The person's perfectly qualified, um, but here's something that I consider a really important issue, and I wonder what they think about it. And um, if I wasn't impressed by their responses, I would have some reluctance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a really good example, I think. Uh, and, there, and, and each department would have something like that, yeah, could, right? Yeah. Um, each could. department head. Yeah. And, um, articulating what those values are through the search process. Or is, is and there I see a role for the council, or at least for this body, and I assume for the council as a whole, um, other than just qualifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, I think my thought, like we got maybe a little hung up on the idea of the, the job description, the job posting, um, wasn't for that you would bring your job description and we would like red pen it, right? Um, that would be absurd. Um, but it, in what you did 
like 10 minutes ago in describing your vision for senior services in Amherst and how that's different, that was like super useful and helped me understand the context of what you were looking for in candidates and, and why you brought forward this candidate. Um, and I think it would have been uh, perhaps useful to have had that conversation. Because uh, also what you said, I mean, it wasn't in your memo. I mean, you have this vision that I assume most of the council is unaware of, mm -hmm. um, but it's very useful to know and very interesting. Um, and I think what I was envisioning with this, and, and you know, the committee might not, might be in slightly different places, um, was having that conversation when a vacancy occurs of, okay, so there's a vacancy, we're gonna hire someone, uh, here's my vision for what this position would be, you know, what do y'all think? And that might inform the job description. So it's not that you would come here with a job description and we'd say, no, you have to do this or this. It would be, you know, um, because if you came here for senior services and you said, yeah, we, want, we need someone to, to run the senior center and make sure they turn the lights on, I'd be like, okay, well maybe there's, there's more we can do, right? Um, and that, that kind of conversation before um, everything goes out, I think would be useful because it helps, especially I think in our role and what we see ourselves, which is here to represent our, the communities in our district, um, it might be, you know, we might also have some information on, you know, things we've heard from people of, well, it'd be really great if the town clerk also, you know, what George was saying with, um, with engaging student voters, right? I mean, it, you might come in here with your vision of town clerk and, and George might say, well, but you haven't talked about this and that's something that would be really important to us. And then maybe that becomes part of the screening or part of the job process. I think that's what we're envisioning a little more than micromanaging mm -hmm. the job process, but sort of that, that vision and how that informs selection of candidates mm -hmm. earlier in the process. I think that's excellent, and I think you say job description, but I don't think we're really talking job description because no. that's kind of a static thing that lives yeah, from exactly. job to job. Right. What you're thinking, I think what you're identifying are the qualities or the uh, recruitment the vision. vision that you have. Um, so while we're on it, are there other things for the town clerk? <laughs> 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 I mean, let's do it. I mean, let's, let's I mean, I thought that's a, those are really good ones. Um, some of it is, is it will be constrained by the applicant pool. No. You might not get everything, but it's always good. I mean, in any recruitment, I had to say what the expectations are um, for, for what, what you want them to be focused on so people know what the values are. Um, so the things that we have talked about for this is, is you know, engaging col you know, college age and younger, younger adults in the, in the in voting in process, the process, being involved in, this, in the census uh, that's a major task for the um, and be, making sure that um, residents of Amherst fully participate in the census, um, trying to you know, being welcome and being excited about uh, in uh, introducing ranked choice voting and being willing to uh, do the education piece of that. Those mm -hmm. are some of the, the sort of things that we mm -hmm. had identified for the mm -hmm. clerk's mm -hmm. position. Because yeah. you, you can't have someone coming in who's not interested in those things because that's the key part of their job. But I don't, did we change the job description? Maybe for some of them, but not, not all of them. So are there other things that, for the clerk's position, you want to bring up? Or you want to think about it? Yeah, yeah I haven't, haven't had much time to think about this. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a conversation, and, and I would loathe to have it at a retreat. I think it's a conversation that belongs fully at a regular town council meeting where the public can can have us doing, and it's a directed conversation by the town manager saying, you're not red penning my job description, but you know, tell me more about the insights you're hearing. Yeah. And job descriptions are fairly rote and don't necessarily include all of those things, but job descriptions are not the only thing. There are, of course, profiles that go with job descriptions. And so the nice little header about what a great team it is to work for is not necessarily written in the legalese of the job description, but is something that is also put out there. And so you can capture more of that in not necessarily the number of words you've paid for in a publication, but when people ask for more information. So it's, it's more the profile, I think, of what we're looking for for somebody, although of course that word has many negative connotations now. But the vision, the qualities that you're looking to evaluate them on, that's one of the things we keep talking about for the appointments too, right? Like, what did you look for when you came up with these people? So we, we might have a handout that says, like we developed for Zoning Board of Appeals, this is what the Zoning Board of Appeals does, so the person knows what they're signing up for. Yeah. But beyond that, like what, what qualities are you looking for to make for this particular town clerk in you know, 
2019, 2020, what does that look like versus just having the technical skills and having the right certifications? Mm -hmm. Because there could be plenty of those people who have zero interest in dealing with college students and that we would want to not want to necessarily let them rise very far to the top if that was true. And so we have your back from that standpoint too to say this is what we're looking for. So then when you write the memo back to us, we say, remember how you told me you wanted this? Well, here's what you got. <laughs> and and it turned out almost nobody was interested in that, but luckily we found the, this person who was. Mm -hmm. So any further comments on that? All right, we have a couple things. Uh, so Alyssa, you mentioned, I think, already job posting locations being in the memo, um, since that's always useful to know who, what, what people might have been seeing it. Uh, there was some comment on the screening committee um, and question uh, a desire to see people who receive these services on the screening committee outside just the normal structure. Um, and also curious about whether there was any outreach to those who receive services to ask, like, you know, what do you think senior services in Amherst need? What did, what did uh, Nancy do really great that you want to make sure carries over? Um, were, were people who actually received the services brought into this process at all? Mm -hmm. So the, the first question is, uh, so um, having other people on the screen, the, the screening committee than the people who are on it, I guess is, I'm just trying to figure out what that piece was. So, so it started, we were talking about the screening committee, yeah. and, and the thought was um, it's useful to have people on the screening committee for a position like this yeah. who are people who actually utilize these services. Mm -hmm. um, and, and doing so outside just say someone from COA. Mm -hmm. um, the question became, well, since we didn't necessarily see that, um, was there any outreach then to people who use the senior center or any of the affiliated uh, programs um, to see sort of what they feel like a senior center or a senior services director needs or, want, or what they want? Or again, given that Nancy did it for so long, is there anything that they were like, you know, she always, she did this really well and needs to continue. Was there any outreach? Yeah, I think that the members of the screen committee did talk to a lot of people, but not in any formal way where they, where, they were, where the public was invited to come in and um, weigh in on what we'd want for the next director of senior services or whatever senior center director. Um, uh, so we did not do that piece. And we have not done that for the town clerk's position either. Any follow-up questions or comments on that? Um, there was a question about demographic information. Mm -hmm. um, there was a feeling that a pool of 28 was large enough that it, um, it would not be identifying to provide uh, demographic information, um, but we, the, there was none provided. I'll, I'll, I can get that to you. Okay. Um, and then the last discussion we had um, was about and this was one in which the committee was not necessarily in agreement, um, was about the release of a press, uh, the, a press release mm -hmm. um, prior to council action mm -hmm. and, and whether or not um, that sort of um, should, ha should have waited until after the council acted. So when, it, when I file it at the town clerk and with the council, it becomes a public document. The press has it already. Whether we control the message or they just do their own and start mm -hmm. contacting people on their own, they're going to do that. Um, it's at that point it's public. Um, I did this for the previous uh, uh, appointment as well for the director's uh, uh, HR director job. Um, I feel like it's important for us to put the spin on it. I always say it's subject to um, a, approval by the town council or review by the town council. Um, and I think the, the press act accurately reported that as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, I think it's more responsible to be communicating to the press versus waiting, thinking they're not gonna pick it up. Also, it's important for the applicant to know that it's going public because once it goes into the clerk's office, you know, you don't know who's going to pick it up and their employers need to know that, it, you know, I always communicate with the person uh, who is applying so that they know that they've done all their due diligence at home. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, I would, 
I guess if we don't do it, then there's going to be an article in the paper that has no uh, information other than what's already been written in the in the transferal memo. I don't uh, think that that's responsible. Follow-up questions or comments on this? George? I think the sense for some members, not this member, but for some members was that when this goes to the press like this, it sort of puts us in a, a more difficult position or awkward position in, in regards to uh, saying no. Um, I don't really personally think that way, but that was, I think, the sense of some. And, and you've just explained why, in fact, it's perfectly reasonable to do this and it makes sense to do this. And now it's our, it's our turn to do our job. And so no, I, I understand how that, yeah. you, it, that could, you could feel that way about that. I think um, assume that it, it's in the press one way or the other, right? Exactly. And that's going to be the case. Um, because when there are vacancies, the press asks me all the time, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And I'm not going to say, uh, I'll say, oh, it's been referred to the council. They're going to go and read what's been referred. They understand how the system works. Yeah. And anybody in the press would do that. And then I, I prefer to, you know, ask the, uh, you know, I, I don't, this is, does not preclude the council taking action. You're going to have to, you have a name in front of you. It's on your agenda. Uh, the only question now is whether it's been in the paper in advance or not. So in order for the council to say no, you're going to have to say no, I don't want this person who's been named. So I guess I'm not really sure where that, the, the line is on that. So those are all of the questions and comments I had written down from our discussion. Is there any that I missed or new questions that came up in your mind during this discussion? No. Alyssa? If I could just follow up on that. Um, yeah, we did go around quite a bit on what that meant. And I totally appreciate the idea that you might as well spin it for the press the way you want to spin it rather than just letting them pick up scraps from other places because they're going to write something no matter what. And it does put an onus on us to have it be awkward for us to say no. and. Perhaps that's reasonable, given the way the charter's written, given the authority that the town manager has. There better be something pretty significant in order for the town council to say no. We did talk about the fact that people's employers have been advised, but also it's an opportunity for the public to really see it, as opposed to the public necessarily looking for our packets 48 hours ahead of time, which the vast majority of humans do not do, but might see the press release, might subscribe to press releases, and therefore could give us input as a town council, you know, whether it's offline or publicly, to say, oh, I know that person, and that person's going to be amazing, or, you know, vice versa. And that, that has some value, too, even though it is, of course, awkward always for us to say no, but that is the position we're put in. But I still come back to the fact that one of the ongoing conversations we'll have here and that we hope to engage you in is that we, we have to have a reason to say yes, but, yes, and, or no, and it can't just be, well, if something egregious happens, well, like what? I mean, the, the example you gave was totally, you know, in terms of, uh, we know that's your, that's your, you know, uncle, and we know he's not qualified. Why we would know that, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> somebody told us that, and for us to be able, we'd like to be able to say yes enthusiastically, rather than yes, because we can't think of a reason to say no. And so being able to potentially have a conversation, one, it is a department head, because obviously we don't talk about this for any of your other hires, but you talk about it at budget time or you know, goals time, but to talk about, you know, I, I wanna bring the town council along so they understand where I'm going with this, and then when I write that final memo, it will all be really obvious to them how we got there, as opposed to just, telling us in a town manager report, I'm working on it, and then saying, and here it's done. I mean, those are not bad things. I'm just find, trying to find ways for people to feel more included in it, even though it's entirely your decision, and then we have no obvious reason. And we don't want to express uneasiness about somebody just because we don't understand our role, as opposed to uneasiness because there's actually something that concerns us about the process. And while I appreciate you saying that it's not necessarily up to the town council to make sure that things got posted, it's not clear to me that it's up to anyone to know that. And so for me to feel like I have 
the ability to say, yes, we followed the rules to the extent I know about them. I'm not a human resources professional. I'm not the police chief. I'm assuming you're doing those things. Some town managers and some towns aren't. They aren't doing the right things that they're supposed to be doing. They're telling their people that they hired people under certain circumstances and find out later they didn't. They didn't follow the rules. Mm -hmm. There's no way to find that out from a memo that's written to us. But the things we do know about, it feels like we can then say, hey, look, there were 28 people. Here's some demographics. Hey, look, they advertised it beyond just Western Massachusetts white directors of senior centers. Great. You know, and then we can all feel like, yay, we're doing a wonderful thing here, rather than expressing reservations about things. And there's tons of things we'll just never know about, and that's OK. But some things we could know more about so that we could Im be more enthusiastic rather than just, I guess so. So I would say that if I have a department head in front of the council, specifically OCA, I would expect you to want to talk to me about it. and have me on the agenda and say, tell me about this person. Why did you choose that? All the questions you've already posed, I think that's a totally responsible thing to do. Um, and I would welcome that. Uh, so I would hope that that would continue uh, with other department heads. Um, I, I would find it challenging to try to, and I would hesitate to put in writing a lot of things that I might want to engage with you in as a conversation as opposed to a written appointment document. Um, but I think you might have questions that I had not anticipated and would be willing. I think it's a really useful conversation to have, and I think that would help with you to understand what your due diligence is um, in, in the appointment. Um, but if I were in your shoes, I would want to meet with the town manager and say, tell me about this person you're appointing and why you chose them and tell me more about the process, what worked, what didn't work. Those are all totally rational things to be concerned about. I think it's a little bit different with um, the boards and committees because there are so many. We, I mean, we treat them a little bit differently. There's a longer time frame for conversation for them. Um, typically, um, you know, we don't do the press releases and all that stuff for that. Um, and I don't think there's a need for that necessarily. Um, but, but I think for department heads, it's a, it's a different, it's a short time frame. Uh, having a face-to-face -face conversation would be very useful. Any final comments or questions for the town manager? Do we have questions, while the town manager is here, do we have questions on Board of Health? By which I mean, I know we had questions on Board of Health. <laughs> <laughs> so, does anyone want to ask questions on Board of Health or give comments? So I'll just preface it by saying it got filed today mm -hmm. um, because when I, July has 31 days, so um, in order to, to be able to meet either tonight's meeting or the August 19th meeting, uh, I had to file it today. I couldn't file it Friday, so I sent you a draft in advance, so you had a little bit of time to look at it. Um, but the official filing happened today, so the clock starts ticking today. So I understand that it's short if you can't act on it. I totally understand that. If you feel like you can, then they'll move forward. But I think they can survive with the... Uh, with that they have if you can't, if you feel like that's too rushed. Okay, Alyssa. There was some sense, although we did not even come close to taking a straw vote, but there was some sense that we're not gonna learn anything between now and the next meeting anyway, so what's the difference? Um, especially since we knew you could be here today because that did come up as being an important part of this mm -hmm. process, just like you said, so see with the clerk. One of the things that came up um, in terms of the memo content was again the idea of an ongoing conversation we need to have about, and I appreciate what you just mentioned about certain things, you know, are like more visiony and direction that you're not necessarily gonna put in the appointment memo, but, and they're also kind of an, an evolving concept. But in the appointment memo, one of the things we've asked about previously and is, not really covered in here, and so we, we perhaps need to come up with a more specific way of asking for it, is that the reappointment, aside from the disagreement on this committee as to whether or not reappointments need to be interviewed again, which is a different issue because obviously that's your choice, is understanding what the reappointment people bring to the table. And so just saying they've been there doesn't feel like enough. We'd like, and we, you know, this 
goes off into our whole conversation about what the CAF does, what our process looks like for appointments. I mean, so it's a longer conversation, but seeing that reminded us that we're gonna have that, we wanna have that longer conversation both with ourselves about your appointments, but also with ourselves about our appointments as to what it is we wanna see on these recommendations to feel like we understand, oh, and this person represents a particular constituency or this rep person represents somebody who can write well or helped bring a lot of people to a forum about a particular hot button issue that it was really valuable to get public engagement on rather than just this person's been there for three years. So that's a conversation we're having, I think, you know, continually and will be part of our future conversation both with ourselves and with the town council. But in the meantime, if you felt like you could add anything else to your memos, I think that would not go amiss at this point in terms of we're not trying to just get you to write pages and pages, but to understand what people are bringing, just like you do with new people when you write, oh, well, that's why this person's interesting and exciting. It's like, well, why is the current person still interesting and exciting, particularly since they're not getting interviewed? is the kind of, is the question I, and it wasn't even really a question because I'm obviously fine with the people you've brought forward because we have no reason to believe they aren't fine. It would just be helpful, I think, to us and to the full town council to have more information. So two reactions to that. One, one is uh, a lot of times we're in a recru recruitment mode as opposed to choosing people. And so we're hoping that people will continue to serve and we're not trying to find reasons to not encourage them to, to serve. The second is, I don't really have the capacity to evaluate a member's role on a committee, really, in a deep way, that if that's what the expectation is, I would render judgment on how well they're performing in their roles. That's, I don't really do that. Um, if someone's on the Shade Tree Committee and they've been on for three years and they're coming back up for a three-year term, I'm not, unless they're not showing up, which is something that we do pay attention to, if someone's not fulfilling their duty to be present, I don't go and look at their votes or see what their the content of the quality of their contributions are. I'm assuming that people who volunteer are there for a reason. Um, I mean, I think you know I did add the additional information that you've requested in terms of who is this person that's being reappointed. Uh, so that's been added to it. But in terms of um, more detail about what they. How, how they're contributing to the existing board um, without doing a lot of research into that for each appointment, I just find that to be, uh, uh, be a high standard, I think, as opposed to welcoming people into the government who want to participate and thank them for, for serving for the two terms that they're offered. George? I feel this is the point where I can cite an authority I often turn to in matters of uh, great difficulty. It was Woody Allen who said many years ago that 90% uh, of life is just showing up. <laughs> so, endorsing Paul's point, at least from my perspective, if you have someone, we've, we already, you've, you're hearing this, Paul, for not maybe that first time, but anyway, mm -hmm. someone has served for three years on a committee um, and there's no obvious issues, I would. Final questions or comments for the town manager? Uh, Darcy. Uh, I just want to comment that um, one applicant who, uh, if you, uh, on an initial look, you might think that he doesn't, his qualifications aren't related at all to mm -hmm. the Board of Health, but I'm hoping that the reason that Timothy Randier is being recommended is because there is an acknowledgement of the connection between environmental issues and climate issues and health. So the Board of Health has a very broad mandate. Yes. I think that's why I added the additional material to let you understand that it's not just health, it's also they look at wells, they have to permit wells, they do a lot with, with, do a lot with hydrology, uh, they do with drinking water. Um, the, you know, Julie Fetterman, health director, is at the forefront of lead in the water. Um, and so having a second hydrologist on the, on the um, committee in anticipation of a potential re um, termina termed out person next year was deemed to be uh, in, in Professor Tobias, and um, who I'm not sure if he's, he's a su superb person to have on the committee, but having some backup for him was seen as being an important value for this 
So, uh, so that's a, that's a you know the Board of Health has such a it's the most powerful you know uh, legal wise board in the in the town. They have more legal authority than almost any other board. So and it's very broad, which includes you know water and you know keeping pools open and all kinds of things like that. I think that comes around a little bit to the discussion that this committee's been having for months now about what we're looking for in appointee profiles. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of it is um, what, in some of these where that connection might not be immediate, uh, like a sentence that just says why, because uh, someone's pr professional credentials or academic background um, often are impressive in this town, but don't necessarily give an idea of what they bring to the committee. Um, mm -hmm. And I had the same immediate thought. I, start, I know Tim Randier. He's my graduate advisor, so I know him. I know him very well. Um, but my first thought was, why? And then I scrolled. At, I, thankfully, you attached to those materials. And I scrolled down, and I saw, you know, septic installations first. And I went, oh, okay, that makes sense then. Um, and so, but I wouldn't have known that had I not scrolled down, right? And so, just uh, in those profiles, sometimes it's not just about. Um, what they do professionally, but why that matters to a committee. And, and you've done that in a couple of your profiles. There was, there was one where you talked about someone's professional credentials, but then you also said, this means she has this research experience, and that's going to be really useful because this committee's about to do this, and it was, it was so clear. So one of the things I, sh I struggle with is that it's easy to default to professional credentials, and that's not what we want all of our committees to be filled with. And I think um, it's hard to not have people who have I mean, this, this town is full of people who have really high mm. value research expertise in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But we also want regular people, to use that term, who, and, you know, doing a profile of someone who has common sense and can listen to an argument and make a r rational response is really important. You know, what I would put into a profile without, I don't know, demeaning someone, I, I don't know exactly how. I try to bring their body of work um, to it, and, and having interest is, is a key feature of it. Um, but it, because I think that, and you know, there will be people who won't have particular expertise in a field that we will want to have serve on committees. So right. um, yeah, so I say what you're saying is tell us why you chose this person, not just their background. Yeah, that's, I think, Got exactly okay. right. For what you just said, exactly. Yeah, I mean. Exactly, yeah. All right, well, if that, I'd like to let the town manager get back to his Great. job. <laughs> this is my job. Well, all right, <laughs> go away. <laughs> Any, Alyssa? So, uh, can you do a demographics thing for council tonight? Just yeah. give it to us tonight, yeah. that'd be cool. Okay, so, with that I am going to entertain a motion that OCA recommend town council approve the town manager appointment of Mary Beth Ogilwicks as the director of senior services. So moved. Is there a second? I would, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion was made by Alyssa. It was seconded by Sarah. Is there is there any further discussion? Uh, Alyssa, motion. Sarah, Sarah second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. May I make a motion? Go ahead, George. I'd like to move that Oka. Um, recommend the town um, manager's appointments to the Board of Health, which would be Stephen George, reappointment for a three-year term, Maureen Malaya, and Timothy Randier for two-year terms. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Sarah, discussion? Alyssa? Um, I think we still struggle with our motions because our motions are different than they used to be. But I would say it's to recommend, recommend the town council approve. approve. Right. I didn't say that. You did not. Will you accept right. that as Most a fr those. friendly amendment? Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, George. You. I'll memorize it one, <laughs> one of these days. Is, <laughs> is there any uh, further discussion on town manager appointments to Board of Health? OK, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 
All right, that's unanimous. So the one other, the la I know we need to, it's been a long meeting. Uh, last thing I just wanted to go over is the plan for tonight. Um, so Oka will be called upon to speak at least twice in tonight's meeting. Um, one will be regarding the non-voting resident members of the Finance Committee. Uh, Darcy wrote and filed that report. Thank you for doing that, Darcy. Uh, my expectation is that when that, when Oka is um, called for a report or comment on that, uh, I will defer to Darcy to deliver the report. Um, of course, at any moment, any member, uh, not at any moment, when Darcy finishes, <laughs> um, other members of Oka are welcome to chime in, but my expectation which I assume is also your expectation, is that you'll deliver the report on that tonight. Um, the second time is regarding uh, Director of Senior Services. Uh, my plan is to give a report then. Um, my expectation was to provide an oral report because it would be very difficult to write a report between now and 6.30, and I don't know that anyone would read it. Um, but I will do my best to capture all my scribbles on this page. Um, are there any questions or comments on the, the reports for tonight? Darcy. I just have one comment, and that is, um, I think that we need to streamline our procedure a little bit in that um, I don't think we need to submit a 24-page report on each appointment. Um, maybe we can have a separate document that has sort of the boilerplate. I mean, I know that there's a lot of things that change on each appointment, but it seems a bit much to be submitting that much information. Um, and I'm wondering if people are actually reading the whole thing. So just, to, just something for us to consider in the future. It seems like we're kind of going overboard on some of this. Any other final thoughts or comments before we adjourn? Alyssa? I would just like that when the discussion takes place about the finance committee members that we not, that we refrain from using, not that we refrain from using, but that we refrain from using the concept of a minority report and just refer to the differing opinions on various issues. Okay. Final comments? Alyssa? Um, so, Final comments before we adjourn or final comments on that topic? Yes. <laughs> so is it my understanding that tonight when we're talking about the zoning bylaw, the zoning bylaw, which of course OCAS had no direct involvement in just as town councilors, but the, it still says four associate members for ZBA, but we only appointed three associates. ZBA. Is that in fact correct? And the reason I don't know that for absolute certain is because, of course, the board and committee list that's on the town website is out of date. It's from May 9th. Um, but the web page has been updated to show three, and it's counting four as a vacancy, but I didn't think... No, I, think we, I thought we, we intended did. to just do three, and we did three. Whereas the bylaw that we'll be looking at tonight says four even though we had no intention of doing four. And so we should just be clear on that because tonight when a town councilor says, but I thought we only had three ZBA or, or vice versa. So I'll have to go back and take a look, but we filled the number of um, people that the ZBA, the chair of the ZBA told us that he wanted. Which was three. Which was three and not four. Right which I was just making sure we all agreed that that was how we remembered it because the reality is the zoning bylaw that we're looking at tonight, completely irrespective of what was reported today at public comment, says four, which does not mean we're necessarily arguably obligated to fill all four, but what I'm trying to get at now that we've heard that public comment in addition is either one, we should be telling the town council to change it to three if we believe three is the right number, or, are we comfortable with the fact that it says four? And we may or may not fill that fourth position at any time in the near future. I guess I don't, since 
I don't know where the disconnect happens, speaking as someone who also happens to serve on bylaw review, why it is that the zoning section that we're bringing forward on the ZBA still says four when we all knew internally, right, that it had changed to three. And it says that in our report, that that's what the ZBA, because the number, right, it was because the other number changed from three to five. We were changing the associate number from four to three at the recommendation of the ZBA. I get all that. But what I'm trying to get at is I think maybe we're better off to leave it alone in the zoning bylaw tonight rather than trying to quick change it to three because then we just don't, then we can have that conversation later. And the town council can say, which if it hadn't been me bringing it up now, maybe nobody would have brought it up. But if any of you have strong feelings that we need to change it from four to three in the bylaw tonight, then we should know that now. The other part is that because we were told three, we could report that we were told three, that's why we gave them three. Four's there as a maximum, and someday maybe we'll appoint four, and someday maybe we won't. So, speaking as also a member of bylaw review, I remember we were very, the original one said Zoning Board of Appeals shall consist of three members and four associate members, which said there has to, it implies there's four, and if there's not four, then there's a vacancy. That was changed in bylaw review to the Zoning Board of Appeals may include up to four, with the understanding that we were only gonna put in three, and that doesn't mean there's a vacancy. It means we could do up to four, and we're gonna, which means we could in theory do one, two, three, or four, and we decided to do four. So I don't, I, there are three. I don't think it requires any type of change, and I don't think it implies that OCA didn't do its job. It just means we had up to four, and we only chose to do three, because that's what we heard. So I don't, I don't, I don't feel like there's actually a conflict, because I remember we put may, incl may include up to, which was very intentionally something that came from you and I on bylaw review because it happened just after we had submitted our ZBA and we thought, hold on, it can't say that because that's not what we just did. Exactly. So, so I, I think we should, sure. okay. We're all clear on that since yes. we just had that brought up to us. We don't know if that's gonna get brought up tonight. Right. Town council at public comment, which could just confuse things when it comes to the zoning bylaw issue tonight at town council. Right. And you said it so well. It doesn't mean that there's a vacancy, but it, the bylaw gives us the ability to go up to four. Right. We did not take that ability based on the recommendation of the ZBA chair at that time. We did three, and we didn't say, and oh, that leaves us a vacancy because we weren't looking, right. we don't perceive it to be a vacancy. Exactly. Sarah? So in case this becomes an issue, do you want me to make sure that I have all of the emails that I have from Lynn asking Mark Parent how many people he felt should be for associate? Do you, do you need a backup on that or are we just fine with it? Because it was, it was definitely more than verbal. It was expressly written. So in case that comes up, I'm not, I'm just saying if you, I got it. If, if you, you have easy it. access yes. to that email. Um, it, it won't be easy, but I absolutely do. Yep. Just in case we, the public commenter from today yep. is also at the meeting yep. tonight, um, because that may very quickly become a conversation of should we use up that fourth spot. Yeah, and so I'll have, I have a lot of documentation on whether or not they wanted three or four officially, okay. so I'll make sure that I have that okay. available to you. I'll put it in our meeting, our, oh, our, I can even just send it to you. Final comments? Uh, August 12th. All right, then with that, I will adjourn the meeting at 12.14 p.m. <laughs>